Ladies and gents, welcome to another episode of Clutch Conversations. It's your boy, Mike, back at you one more again, live on a Thursday night. Man, it's good to be back in the house tonight, man. Shout out to the homie, Matt, for coming at the last minute, man. I called the homie up, and that's what friends are for, man. I called the homie up and said, man, I need a solid, man. I need you to run the show for me. And he was like, I'm on it. Say less, bro. So, man, shout out to the homie, Matt, from Ebony and Ivory Reptiles. Shout out to the homie, Justin. Jaffe and the homie Unk from What More from Strippers, man. Y'all held it down last week uh, without your boy, man. So we really appreciate it, man. But yeah, like I said, man, it's good to be back in the house tonight. Shout out to my lovely wife, Takar. Appreciate everything you do. You always mm -hmm. holding us down. So we definitely really appreciate that. Y'all make sure y'all show us some love in the, in the chat as well. And don't stop there, man. Make sure you show the channel some love as well. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button and hook smash that notification bell. And don't forget, audio-only episodes of Clutch Conversations are available on all major podcasting platforms. That's Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and more. And when you're checking us out there on your favorite audio podcast platform, please be sure to follow, rate, and review. We really appreciate the love. We really appreciate the support. Speaking of support, if you're in this reptile hobby in any shape, form, or fashion, make sure you're supporting US Arc and US Arc Florida. The link for both of those organizations are in the description below. Definitely go get your membership. If you don't have a membership, drop a donation, a little extra rounding up with your shipping when you're shipping out your snakes to your customers, whatever you got to do, but make sure you spread the word about both these these organizations that's helping protect our rights as reptile keepers, man. My tongue getting twisted and tied tonight, man. I've been out the game for a week and I'm rusty already. We're going to kick the sponsor video real quick and then we'll be right back. Big dreams start in small towns. Small Town Exotics is a family-ran business that specializes in high-quality ball python morphs, western hog noses, and select leopard geckos. They are proud members of U.S. Art, U.S. Art Florida, and the Orient Society. Stay connected with Small Town Exotics on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Witness their journey as they grow their business and showcase their animals to the world. Thank you, Small Town Exotics, for sponsoring the show. angels it comes to life shout out to the sponsors man really appreciate y'all appreciate the support let's see who we got in the chat tonight irresistible pythons what's good nicky appreciate you coming out sis ro 5.0 in the building what's good homie where's tane clan in the building i know y'all gonna be deep tonight mcclure hatchery what's good appreciate you coming out appreciate the support Pastel Pat, Dragon Soul Reptiles in the building. What's good, homie? Appreciate you coming out. 352 in the building. Brian from Heathen Hatchery in the building. What's good, homie? The Sultan of Support himself, Bosa. What's good, bro? Appreciate you coming out. Tom, Low Life Exotics in the building. What's good, homie? Appreciate you coming out. Celtic Reptiles. Yo, what up, what up, what up? Appreciate you coming out. The Pink Panther, Sammy. What's good? Appreciate you coming out. Got the homie Logan in the building. What's good? One of the OGs. Appreciate you coming out. Krista, what's up? Neurofy Zydex. Appreciate you coming out. Appreciate the support. More Forge in the building. What's good, homie? Appreciate you coming out. Appreciate the support. Blakers Pythons in the building. What's up? What's up? What's up? Eric's More Factory in the building. What's good, homie? Appreciate you coming out. We got David from Join Reptiles in the building. Appreciate you coming out. 
What's good, homie? We got the homie Darren from Sloan Morphs in the building. And hey, we're going to stop it right there. We're going to kick the intro and then we'll be right back. You listen to me, I got that flavor. I know you're dying to feed. I ain't no dancer, just got some hip in my feet. Now throw your hands up. Ooh, you bring the lighter, I got the fuse. You make a fire, I'll add the fuel. Follow my lead, just watch the shoes. Wiz Cole in the building, episode 112, State Property, Wisconsin. What's oh, good, fellas? Oh, I didn't know if it was up? working or not. I kept talking, <laughs> and I see Wiz is down there talking, and I'm like, I can't hear nobody. I can't hear myself. I can't hear nothing. And I'm pushing buttons trying to see if I can get it to work. I'll be vibing, man. That I hear it. Is this thing on? Is this thing on? That's what I was doing. <laughs> Yeah, fellas, you doing all right tonight? Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm First ready to thing, take man, a I really nap. It. Say again? I'm ready to take a nap. Oh, we'll we'll let you get out here in about four hours. <laughs> Six hours, like last Friday. You know how Fridays go. Man, I couldn't believe it. Six hours. Hey, this is only Thursday, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we we definitely like uh, run six hours, man. Shout out to the homie Keys, man. Like he be holding it down. And he do it consistently every for sure. week, every Saturday, Friday for sure. For yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, how's y'all today been going? Pretty good, man. Picked up two snakes today from FedEx. Um, went to work, and uh, now I'm home, man. I basically just got home a few minutes ago. I got a. You know, it's Thursday, it's rat day, so I, you know, got to clean the rats and all that after this. So, you know, the grind, man, it never stops. No, oh, rats are grind. <laughs> yeah, man, rodents. Are, that's the real work, is the rodents. It sure. is. I just took 500 frozen to um, a retic breeder today. A word? 500 jumbo frozen. Wow. That's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. Retired yeah. breeders. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, they were all retired breeders. There was well, there's fifteen hundred and fifty total. And I told it was Amanda Bow. I says, Hey, I'm not gonna have any for a while now. It'll be a month, a few months. You know, but I've got a some lot of rats. Anymore. I've got What's that. I've got a probably a quarter of an eight foot freezer full right now. So yeah, <laughs> let me know. I'll take them when I go there. Sounds good. Yep. <laughs> Get them out of there. That's how I'm with her. I'm like, pay me when you can. I don't want them in my freezer. At least they're you're liable for them to still pay when they're in your property. Yeah, they're nope. too big for any of my ball pythons to eat, so I I can't use them. I don't have any big snakes anymore. Back when yep. we used to have boas and a few retics, you know, like I had garbage cans to feed all those to, but I I don't have anything big enough to eat a jumbo rat anymore. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm nothing that big. I just got a couple of. Um, doom rules boy shout out to lame worm exotics the sponsor uh he sent me a 1.1 doom rules boys but they they still young young so i got you know a couple years to wait before they big enough man the prices um, really went up on them too do you see that yeah, yeah. Pretty high. man yeah, I like, like i couldn't believe it you know you used to be able to get them for 200 bucks they're like 650 now yeah yeah pretty penny yeah. for sure i, I mean it's super Go ahead, Garrick. I'm sorry. Well, I just said uh, I had a couple of those back in the mid 90s. I'd say I dabbled with them a little bit. I never brought them or anything. I actually think I'm I don't even remember if I even had a pair or if it was two males or what it was. But, you know, I, I just had them just for some experience with them. And they're cool snakes. I really like them a lot. I wish that I had a little bit more ability to to toy around with different species than I do now. I mean, I, 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 I do this because I love reptiles and I love all reptiles. I mean, if it was up to me, I'd have a whole big room full of 
a ton of different, like, a, like every species imaginable, you know, but it's just, it's so hard to take care of uh, like so many different kinds of animals. Like you get into like, like right now, like I've got ball pythons really dialed in um, and I can, you know, I can take care of those and I can breed them, you know, without even trying, but to have a different species where they have a completely different weekly care regimen, it's very hard to keep up with that. And I, I felt like back when I was doing that, that some, some of the projects I was working with suffered a little bit because of that. Like I couldn't, mm -hmm. I couldn't focus on them because I had so much energy focused on my ball pythons, even to the point where I eventually had to cut back massively on the geckos and the bearded dragons and veiled chameleons and all the other different things they used to breed. I could, I just couldn't handle dealing with that many different uh, care regimens and, you know, ball pythons. I know like, okay, on Mondays I have to do this and Tuesdays I have to do this. And, and it's just, it's so much easier to just repeat the same process yep. week after week. Yep. Right. Rather than mess around with like different hibernation cycles with different colubrids and things like that. Like that, that gets hard when you have so many animals. Yeah. For yeah. Sure. It becomes like second nature when you just work with like the one species. I know when I first got in, I tried to, uh, I thought I was going to breed like a whole bunch of stuff because I got in, I was like uh, inexperienced, didn't know too much, uh, got in probably a little bit too quick with like getting multiple species. But then like once I started doing it, like I saw how challenging it was to like balance the different regimens. And so like I quickly kind of pumped the brakes on that and just really yeah. become the focus. Maybe at some point later down the road, I'll, I'll do more when I got like more bandwidth. But for right now, like I'm, I'm perfectly content focusing on uh, the species that I have, which other species is like small in numbers, but uh, primarily just focusing on the ball python. If I can keep things dialed in, right? The problem yeah, exactly. is, is if you have a big room and you got the different care, I mean, you got monitors in a room with ball pythons. You got, you know, you got all these different species in there and they don't, they don't require the same thing. So it's hard because you're, you're kind of heating that whole room in order to ball python. Some need it warmer, some need it cooler than that. So True. you're if you got boas, I think personally, from what I understand from a lot of people and people that I know, they they keep their boas a little bit cooler. And mm. when you're in a ball python room at 70, you know, 78 to 85, mm -hmm. you know, depending on the time of year, because it'll fluctuate some. You know, I mean, really, like, it's hard to have multiple species set up and do what you should, you know, you sh getting your production and all that. You don't get that. Yeah. yeah. I had, yeah. I had boas for, you know, for quite a few years. And I never had the success that I did with ball pythons. Mm -hmm. Well, look and, at Kyle, um, you know, your, your ex-employee there. He gets Kyle all them boa the litters. And it's like. Game. Yeah. He, yeah, he, he breeds boas great, but he worked for me for, I don't know how many years, two or three years. And he, he, um, you know, he took care of all my boas that I had and we just could not get good production out of them. But I, you know, like now he's got it really dialed in where he can do them without any problem. And I never was at that point, but I think if I had a separate room for them where I could keep them at a little bit different, yeah. temperature, I probably could have done it. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, I do think they need cooler temperatures overall. And it seemed like for every one litter that I would get, that would come out great. I get another litter, at least one more, maybe two more litters that would be complete slug outs or slow borns, premiums. Yeah. And it's, it's just, it's hard, but yeah, I'd, I'd like to, I'd like to work with more species. I miss having rainbow boas and blood pythons and, uh, the, uh, you know, boa constrictors. There's a few boas mm -hmm. I'd love to get my hands on right now. And, you know, high and yeah, there's all kinds of cool stuff. There's so many cool animals out there to work with. Facts, facts. So uh, I've heard some people, like some boa breeders, say be breeding boas is like almost like fe feast or famine. And that sounds like what you were describing too. Like you have like some good ones and then like some bad ones and it was just like not consistent. So the guy, cow that y'all are talking about, was he consistent with his boa production? Oh, man all the time <laughs> like I, and i don't know how he does it he, i mean he he literally has them set up in his basement somewhere and i don't even think he has like a room for them oh no maybe he did get a room for them now that's right he does have a small room in his house for them but he didn't before and he moved a couple different places because he was renting and he was still mm -hmm. killing it in these other places you Thanks. know so i mean yeah, he breeds pretty much everything he wants to now, whenever he wants to. And 
Um, yeah, I, I envy that. I, I was never that good at bows, and I tried for a long. I, I got my first albino bow I bought from Pete Call back in 1996, and we paid. I went I went into that with another guy, a friend of mine uh, who's not in the business anymore, but um, we we co-owned. We bought an albino male and a 100% het female and a 66% possible het female. Uh, this is back when albino males were, I can't remember how, 4,500, maybe, maybe it was even wow. more than that. They were really, exp- I mean, they were, it was pretty wow. cutting edge back in, 19, you know, I was in college at the time. And so that was like literally all the money I had, I put into that project and we never made our money back on that project. It was, it was, well, yeah. yeah. Didn't you have someone <laughs> steal a boa from you too? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I Something of that nature. Yeah. Boy, that's what cool. you have? That's going I back. Mean, I remember that. Time. You know, that was a long time ago. Yeah. They stole it from out your house or facility where they stole it from? Yeah, actually, it was from my house. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Boy, that's a that's a memory that I just completely deleted. And I was, <laughs> oh, man. I, I remember <laughs> everything. Cow man. For a memory. Yeah. I had, I had a, um, uh, like a, a breedable albino male in my house, Cute. at my parents' house. And I'm thinking it was somebody that I showed some snakes to, like, a week or two before that and all of a sudden i come home uh, from work one day and i go down there i had those old neodisha cages the ones with the slanted fronts yeah uh, really old um and anyway the the cage the the glass was like off like off the cage and the snake was gone and it's like okay even if that snake escaped the cage it would have just pushed it open and pushed the glass exactly. where it is it remove where it. is it you know, I mean, a boa like that, it ain't that hard to find. True. Right. True. Yeah. yeah, but, yeah. Wow. I, I completely, if you, if you wouldn't have mentioned that just now, I probably would have never. I think that away, was huh? when you were, I think you might have even been working at Cloverland at the time. when Cloverland, you. Were, yeah. The past or, yeah. yeah. Yep. I, I was actually, yeah, that was a, that was a pretty big kick in the nuts. I mean, back then. You know, like I didn't have a lot of money to put into this. I, yeah. I was scraping for a long time to, to, I put every penny I could into this and I was, you know, experimenting with all kinds of different species. I had leaf tail geckos and like, I, I really gravitated towards all like the really rare stuff. And I just didn't have a lot of success breeding that. And I started to, be, to become successful when I finally settled on, okay, I'm going to not deal with all those like really risky projects. I'm going to deal with stuff that I know that I can breed and I know I can sell like leopard geckos and then crested geckos and bearded dragons and stuff like that you did veiled that, chameleons too i remember going over sense. there and you you threw some eggs out and then all of a sudden one like one out of the whole batch was okay and i seen it in the the baby was in the trash and we took it out and put it in the cage i don't remember <laughs> that either yep. <laughs> yep. i got all the memories i remember everything oh i do yeah yeah, I guess. Well, you've been you you started coming around to my shop back in oh god. I mean, I would that'd be like, like 18. 20, 20 years, 20, 21 years ago when you had your your small shop at your house. Yeah, well that would that was I built my facility now in 2003 and moved animals in in early 2004. So that would have had to have, I think it that was, was before that. It was probably like right around 2000. Wow. It was when you had the place in Mosini. Yeah. Like yeah. before I graduated, 17, I was like 17 or 18. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Shout out to the home. Kyle man. and I go back a long ways. <laughs> you know, 20, 20, 20 years. Yeah, for sure. That's awesome. Hey, hey, appreciate it. Appreciate the love, man. 262 in the building. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's so how's y'all season going? Slow, bro. Still slow. I, I'm not I got like a lot. You know, I'm not really breeding a lot, to be honest with you. I True. the way I got about a hundred babies left from last year, and I and I might do like twenty to forty clutches of all really kind of dialed in things, mostly mm-hmm. for holdbacks and stuff that I really want to make. Stuff. Yeah. I mean, I have a, <clears throat> enough multi gene recessive for the next 20 years, but I still want to make certain things and I'm just kind of dialed in on trying to do those only. So, uh, you say about 20 to 40 clutches. Is that, uh, what's your normal like clutch count? What I did 80 last year? year. Oh, wow. Wow. And I did a hundred and I did 35 the year before that. 
that's when I moved into my building. Mm-hmm. And then the year before that, I did 114. But I think, you know, I'm going to keep it right around my max number. I, I really don't want to do over 100, really. And I'd really like to keep it around 75. Got it. Okay. I, okay. I mean, just because, you know, I got so much of, so much of that multi-gene recessive things, I, I don't need to do a lot more, you know? Gotcha. Makes sense. Gotcha. Makes sense. So is your oh, seed? Oh, in there. oh yeah, yeah. Facts, facts. Yeah, because that's where the market's gonna go. Like the yep. multi recesses and making the and throwing the codoms in there. Codoms, and whatnot. 100%. Is your season uh typically late, early, year round? Cal? See, I have a really tight season. Like I'll start bre- most of the time I'll start breeding in December. This year I didn't even start till like a month ago. Oh, just wow. because I'm and and I'm fine. I literally put a female uh or a male in with a female, I saw that she had follicles and I checked her and she wouldn't eat rats. So I gave her a bunch of mice and literally within a few weeks, she went from 10 millimeters all the way to 25. Yeah. And, oh, wow. and I only bred her one time. I got a second lock in on her. I'll probably breed her only a few locks, you know, and she'll be good to go. You know, so I think if you kind of watch them, that's another thing too. When you have so many animals, you can't watch them with the ultrasound like that. But if you can watch them with the ultrasound, you can find them at 10 or 15 and you can put a male in there once or twice and they'll be good. You just yeah, watch yeah. them grow. That's my goal. Yeah. I want to be yeah. able to get, get every clutch with one or two locks for sure. You can like definitely do three. that. that. That's the one drawback to not using ultrasound. I basically do like the once every four to six weeks breeding plan. Okay. Like, and then at, at some point you can just look at a female and you can say, you know, I don't need to breed her anymore. Like I have females, I have females that I, I just know are going to lay and it might be two, three months from now, but I know I don't need to breed them anymore. Uh, but having an ultrasound, which works if you have a smaller collection, when you have, you know, 600 breeder females, the way I do, you can't <laughs> ultrasound. <laughs> So, that's a whole day worth of ultrasound at well, least. Or, or at two. least. At think, least. Think, about, sure. think about how many you can do per hour and then figure you know figure that out to 600 females like you can't you can't ultrasound that many you'd have to hire somebody full-time you've got to have somebody yep for sure yeah. for sure yeah. that's yeah, great a few hours and i don't got nowhere near 600 hey, at least females. you wouldn't be paying them what they ultrasound at the doctor for i mean <laughs> You know, before I mean, that. <laughs> that. Or even the vet. I work at a I work at the ER vet, bro. And listen, when I sometimes when I come bring them people estimates, I've got <laughs> it be written all over my face. I just be <laughs> meek handing it to them like <laughs> sometimes you probably don't even want to go there because they're just like, you know, and especially if it's you know, dogs and cats and things like yep. that, people are gonna have a you know, they're just gonna be crushed. Yeah, it's yeah. Horrible. you know, so it's That's it's hard part. to it's hard to do that. Yeah. Definitely the worst part. Um, my uh, my season it like like Kyle. I usually go December or so. Um, I start pairing, but this year I waited a little bit later. I didn't really go heavy with pairings until damn near Tenley. Uh, so just recently, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, See, that's I the same with me. Started... I did that. I did the same thing, and it's funny because I found a lot of females with follicles, yep. but they're only at like they're only at five or ten. And to me, I think that just that one breeding may stimulate them follicles to oh, jump. Yeah. Oh, if, sure. As long as you keep feeding them, they'll yeah. jump. So those females, now to me, so that that basically tells me that if you watch enough, if you have an ultrasound, you could literally breed any time of year. Any female, any time of year, if she's got follicles, you start mm-hmm. stimulating her with, to grow the follicles with that original lock, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then feeding her, you know. Pile on the food, 100%. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And I don't cool. For me. You know, I don't cool. You know, there's people that cool. I keep my ball pythons a little cooler than normal. I mean, my room is only, I keep it at 75. Okay. And then my hot spots are like 83 to 88. You know, it depends on where they are in the rack because I use plastic. So it Mm. doesn't have the, I don't, you know, that's another thing too. I've. I don't like belly heat for some reason. I like back heat or side heat because literally they have to push their bodies up against it to get the heat where if they're sitting back there on that heat, on the belly heat, especially if you're feeding them, they're over there cooking those follicles at the same time while you're pounding them with food. 
So they, you know, there's True. things that I think could definitely happen there. True. I agree. I, I definitely changed uh, me, me, Mike, and a few other people actually had a conversation uh, about temps being up high and the relationship to slugs and bad eggs and, you know, stuff like that. And I lowered mine. I'm, my room is at like 74, 75. And then yeah. my hot spots, they're, they're all at like 88. I'll tell you a quick story here. Um, so I, you know, I was breeding ball pythons obviously for a long time in 20. 13, I had an awesome year in 2012. In 2013, I spent a lot of time listening to other people about how they do things. Mm -hmm. And I decided to kind of change up how I did things at my facility. And so I, my building heats up a lot. Like it's really well insulated. And in summer, like if I, if I would lose air conditioning, it would be 120 in that room. Back when I had like bearded dragons and stuff in there having, you know, powerful heat lamps. So in 2013, I decided to turn my air conditioner off in the winter. So I actually had to even run it in the winter. Um, and so my, my building basically ended up being about five degrees warmer on average at night and during the day. It was like in the mid, I would say mid 80s to upper 86, 87 sometimes okay. during the day. And at night it was, it never really got below 80. And I started out 2013 getting clutch after clutch of slugs and just slugs and slugs. And I, I started, you know, like by March, I'm like, when everything started laying eggs, I'm like, oh my God, what am I, what's going on? You know, I got to do something about this. So I put my facility through a mini cool down in spring to try mm -hmm. to right the ship. And by the end of the year, I ended up with, I think a 53 or 54% hatch rate. But that, that is like, if I would have kept things the way I did it up till 2012, I, I would have had a lot more success. And this is back when I was breeding my first bananas. Like this is back in 2012. Oh, okay. 2013 when bananas were like $40,000. Yeah. yeah, when bananas were bananas. I had, I had, I had like entire clutches of bananas, banana genetic stripes, um, uh, super mystics, which were like 7,500 a piece back then. Like all, I probably, by doing that little experiment, the reason why I did it is because I wanted to try to keep the humidity higher in my shop. Okay. I've always struggled with humidity. Um, I figured if I wasn't running the air conditioning in winter, which you wouldn't think you need to run air conditioning in winter. If I didn't run it, it the humidity would stay higher. So, but by doing that, that uh, caused the air temperature to stay higher. So I didn't have the air conditioner cooling it down. And I probably, I mean, just as a very rough estimate, I probably lot, uh, probably cost me like a half a million dollars oh. to do that. Oh. You know, when you have whole, you have multiple clutches that could be bananas in there at forty thousand dollars a piece, and you got eight eggs, and they're all slugs like that. Oh, that, that's a gut punch for real. Yeah, yeah. It, it was. Yeah, but I rated the ship, and ever since then, I've been in the uh, upper eighties to. I don't know if I've ever broken ninety percent hatch rate yet, but I've gotten into the like mid to upper eighties. I'm pretty much there every year now, so. Um, you know, it's definitely, definitely gotten better, but yeah, that was a poor time mistake on my part. So everybody oh. makes mistakes. So everybody out there, you live and you uh, learn, do something and you screw up, you live and yep. you learn and you just, you know, try to try to learn from your, your, uh, mistakes and, yep. make, you know, do things better the next year. That's all you can do is just learn. I mean, I'm still learning. I know you guys are all still learning too. We're all trying oh, yeah. to still figure this stuff out and, and, uh, yeah, we just gotta, you know, Take a little bit of knowledge that we gain each season and and continue on. Hundred percent. Facts, facts. Yeah, when I dropped my temps, I had a much better uh, uh, hatch rate and Same. lay rate the next year, like much Same. better. Yep. Like I was slugging out left and right. I was like, man, what's going on? And I talked to some people, and they told me about adjusting temps. I adjusted temps, and just like that, it was better. See, I don't adjust my temperatures at all. My rooms naturally get a little stay average, a little bit cooler in the winter. And they average a little warmer in the summer. So the only thing that I would say is maybe my late season clutches that that are um, like with where the females growing the follicles and she's being bred late in the summer. Mm -hmm. Those clutches maybe have a little bit higher infertility rate because they're being the eggs are being fertilized in summer when the room's been warm for higher several tent. months already. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, most of the season. Um, just the ambient room temperature just lowers naturally when it's cold up here. Now, now this winter hasn't been as cold, 
So um, it maybe hasn't been quite as extreme, but but yeah, for the most part, just the natural uh, raising and lowering of the room temperature. I, I haven't adjusted my my hot spots on my racks in ten years. I, I just don't. Oh, wow. think, and I don't I don't need to. But that's just the way my room my rooms work. Is yeah, you got it dialed in. I yeah, think for sure. Yeah. I think it's been colder in the last two weeks than it's been for most of the winter. To be honest no with kidding. you. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Man, we've been shipping all all winter long, shipping animals, and it's like this is unheard of january shipping almost every week mm -hmm. yeah you know this ain't nor this wasn't normal at all not for us <laughs> no, not, not for us this is what you like around this time of year for you i love this winter it's been the best i mean yeah uh, this we, we, have, we have a little bit of snow right now but i mean wisconsin got a pretty big snowstorm over the last few days but we didn't get it yeah. too bad up here and i've got a little bit of snow out in on my lawn right now It'll be gone by the end of the day, Saturday. And yep. most of the winter, it's been just yep. grass, no snow. Yeah, so. no complaints. No yeah. complaints. No, uh, it's usually in either, the 30s. Man. This has been one of the best ones. I literally didn't even, I think I plowed my driveway one time. Yeah, I didn't. Actually, yes, I shoveled once. And one I didn't time. even have to bring out the snowblower. Yep. 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 Oh, this is for me. I'm in Florida. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you ain't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I heard yeah. down there the I heard down there too. Um, you know Ken Masick, he moved down to Florida, and he was in Illinois, and he told me that ball python breeding down in Florida is a completely different game than what it is here. Mm -hmm. yeah. That you got to take advantage of every single storm that comes through to try to breed because of the fronts and everything like that. Yeah, I definitely cool. take advantage of the storms. Like if I see it's about to rain, I was like, oh yeah, this is a pairing day for me. That works That's here. here. Right here. Yep, it's I still do that here for sure. Yep, yeah, Anytime I do that when that, it snows too. Yep, that pressure change, that barometric. Yeah, they know, they know. So yeah. I just throw, I throw a male in there every time I get a storm, every time year round too. I mean, if if I want a female to go in the summer, whatever, and it's a nice summer storm going on, I'll throw a male in there real quick too. See what happens. See, yep. that's what I think I might start doing. Try not to do such a season because I kind of have like a window, you know, like I, I was doing like basically from. Like about December to June, I would completely stop breeding after that. And you'd get a couple stragglers, you know, yeah. females. If you're ultrasounding everything, you'd get a couple that would go way later. But for yeah. the most part, you're getting your clutches within like a two to three month period. You're getting all your clutches. And Same. I'd like to stagger that. It'd be a little bit easier with the babies, easy. you know. That's my goal. Yeah. And I then like, like, like yeah. you always have stuff available you always have new hatchlings you always have fresh stuff you're always pushing the needle forward because you know there's there's more stuff behind this stuff that you got in front of you so well, and here's another thing yeah. with that being said you can take males and some of your first year males you can still get clutches out of them their first year because if you're staggering yeah. your breedings yes. and trying to yes. not run a tight season you're yep. able to use some of those males Mm -hmm. Yeah, they'll exactly. be up to size a little bit later in the season for sure. For yep, sure. like I just got yeah. two of my males triple visuals. To they're like you know one of them is seven hundred and the other one is like almost six hundred. But you know in another month I could pair oh, yeah. one or two of those. You know. Yep. Yep. They'll be right there for sure. Real quick shout out, shout out to the homie Elias. Let's go, Big Brother Wiz, one of the best mentors and good man in the game. I concur. Appreciate humble. you, homie. Very very humble man. Like I said at the beginning, bro. I'm I'm literally humbled to be in such good company right now man like i i would have never pictured myself being here being on this platform being mentioned with you know what i'm saying these two greats right here come on man like this is a blessing for me man i definitely appreciate y'all garrick been bro i've been looking up to garrick since i first jumped in the game a couple of my earliest snakes came from him always stopped to talk to me always quick to show some love and drop some knowledge on me so big salute to you i've been hearing about kyle from all the circles that i move in everybody know kyle everybody rock with kyle so big salute to both of y'all man and big salute to mike for bringing us all together on this platform and like i said just bless me and, and include me in the presence of such greats man for real yeah like i said it's, it's kind of taken me a little bit to get out here and get on these things because i just don't do this type of stuff and i did one show so far this is only my second in all the years i've been doing this heck yeah we here for you bro definitely you know last yeah. week i i really enjoyed that last week because i'll tell you what i sold that guy that disco spot nose clown i can't remember what his name was but man 
that disco vanilla stuff he was making that took me by surprise. Like, I yeah, said, originally when I saw the disco vanillas, Mark Bailey had them, but they were misidentified. They were not disco vanillas. They just look like a vanilla, you know, or a disco. They weren't the combo. Yeah. You know, that I was, was kind of disappointed because I threw that all by the wayside because of that. Those reason. I slept on. I definitely slept on disco and vanilla. I don't even have vanilla. Since we are coming right off uh, uh, shout outs and whatnot, uh, we might as well get the state uh, flower segment in. So we do the state flower segment on this show. So essentially the state flower for uh, Wisconsin is the wood violet, if I'm not mistaken. And so we talk about that white one. It's like a bluish, bluish, purpley. Yeah. 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 And so we're talking about giving folks their flowers, metaphorically speaking. So who um, in Wisconsin would y'all give flowers to um in the reptile community uh that you want to shout out here on the show obviously you can't mention everybody but who are some of the first folks that come to your mind uh we can start with you garrett um i got three people i would say actually technically four uh one's kyle king at constrictor kings uh he worked for me for a while he's really good with boas i've known him for at least 20 years um the other ones would be uh luke and ryan from captive bread specialties Yep. Uh, awesome guys. I, I, I love those guys and they've got great stuff too. And then, uh, you know, Kyle, of course, you know, I've known him for a long time. Um, and Melicio. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, and Doug Knacker. Um, oh, I'm yeah. pretty good friends with different. him too. He, he actually lives in my hometown here and I've known him for forever. Uh, he got his first ball pythons from me or some of his first anyway. So yeah, I mean, there's a lot of a lot of great uh, reptile people up in this area. I got one oh, you didn't nice. say, Chad Fuchs. Oh yeah, yes. Chad oh. Fuchs. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've known him longer than all of them. I've known I him. Know. Yeah, and I don't know if he. See, I remember that too. Shout out to Chad. <laughs> and, and I don't know if he, I, I told him he was asking me for the link to come in here and watch, and uh. And I said, well, it's on my Instagram story. I can't send you the link right now. I'm in the show. That's why the camera kept going on and off because he's <laughs> texting me constantly, you know. But yeah, he's, he's got some yeah. some good projects he's working on, you know, and they don't have a big collection, but they're putting some nice stuff together. Well, well, the maybe not a big ball python collection. Chad's got some awesome hog nose. And Hoggies. Oh, oh, man. Oh, nice. too. What's his business? What's, what's the name of the company? CF Snakes. CF snakes. Yeah, yeah. Chad and he got kinda... those leucistic hog nose too, and they're he's got the big ones, like man, and they hood up like cobras, and they got that little pig nose on them. You know, they're yeah. super cool. Heck yeah, yeah. yeah I've known cool. Chad for God, it's got to be at least twenty longer than me since, since I was in college. Chad went to UWSP where I went for a little while, and uh, I actually got to meet him. That I. I we became friends there and we've been friends ever since and chat. Yeah. He's awesome. And yeah, he's so, cool. so meticulous with his animals. I mean, if you want quality, especially with the hog nose, he, he is dialed in on hog nose. You want good stuff. You got to go to Chad. He's, he's the best. Agreed. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Anybody else, Kyle? Um, not really. I mean, I, I pretty much said it, you know, I, I just, I mean, there's so many people I, you know, but it's just like, you know, cause I know Kyle too, the guy that worked for Garrick, I knew him for, ye- you know, years and I've been to his place for a Packer game or cookouts or whatever, or just mm-hmm. to check out snakes or, you know, and stuff like that. But, That's uh, cool. you know, Jim Steflug has been in the business yeah. a long time too. I don't know if anybody, you yeah. know, I, I don't know if you guys know him, but yes, uh, SW reptiles. I mean, yeah. he used to give okay. me a, he used to get my blood pressure up a long time ago, but he's gotten a little bit better at that with his old got a age, lot of paint I guess. Stuff. Yeah, he got a lot of paint stuff over there. But yeah, yeah he got some cool paint stuff. Yeah. He actually hatched out some kind of animal too. We don't know if it's genetic yet. I sold Jim a pair of pides and the pair of pides came from the guy got this weird normal and it looked like a yellow belly at the time. And I said, hey, man, breed them together and see, you should get like a, you might get like a highway or an ivory. Well, he ended up getting pieds. Like literally you could pick, if you bred up, if you bred this type of het pied to a normal, you could pick out the hets. They were visual without the pied tracks. They just looked so weird that you could pick the hets out. And I told him to breed them together and he got pieds. Well, I got all that stuff. 
And then I sold Jim a pair of pides and he made like, he bred a pair of pides from them, the brother and sister from the same clutch. And he hatched out some weird kind of paradox, L, uh, like paradox lavender snow type animal out of wow. two pides. What? <laughs> really? Yeah. Out of two pides, he hatched this like, it was like a lavender snow with like black paradox on it wow and they're not het pied they they or, i mean they were not het albino or, 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 yeah and he bred them more than once and he never made that animal again either he wow. has the That's... it's a female so he's growing it up right now hmm. but i mean it could be something genetic it was an wow. anomaly i don't cool. know if you i don't know if you guys know about how the static ro the, pressure p the static came about you know this the there's static acid and confusion right the static was produced out of a pastel female. <laughs> Fred Kick originally produced it. He bred that same pair again, trying to get the statics. He could not reproduce it out of the parents. But when that female static got the size, he bred that, and it was genetic. Weird. Spontaneous, yeah, that's weird. Spontaneous mutation. Yeah, that's yes. weird. Yes. Wow, you never I think that's how, I think that's how a lot of these things maybe come about in the wild. They come out that's of it's cool. spontaneous thing, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's nuts. That's, that's nuts. crazy. Did you uh yeah. so that's spot nose hypo uh, clown female that I got from you, Cal? Like hands down, like one of my top snakes in my collection. Oh man, but, that's like, one of the she prettiest snakes. Crazy. Like I told these guys last week, man, I shouldn't have sold that. <laughs> you know, I got another one for sale. <laughs> I got a male. I never said, kept a female. I do have a female for sale right now. And I'm, I, you know, I have better stuff. So I, I would like to produce like a true ghost spot nose clown. So I don't know if I want to keep the regular because I'm very close at making that other one. So it's just kind of hard. You know, it's, it's, I, I just, you know, it's like, man, you keep this. You, then you end up like Garrick and you keep too many animals, <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm between, yeah, this year I thought I was doing really well. Like, like probably by August, I think I only had like 30 or 40 snakes held back. I'm like, oh, I'm doing great. Uh, now from 2023, I probably ended up with 170 something <laughs> wow you can't help it and you know especially when you're dealing with when you're trying to you know work on all these multi yeah, yeah, yeah. things yeah. like odds if you produce quad hats or triple hats or whatever like that like that you got to keep them all all got the to. females anyway and by the time you you know you, yeah you just end up see i don't want to keep any of that stuff i want to breed for at least a visual triple hat for quads yeah, and then I want it for the triples. Yeah, I want to breed for a double visual double. hat yeah. or a visual double hat. I don't want to keep any triple hats or any quad hats unless the triple hats will be for a quad, and then the 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 triples will be like a visual double hats at least. I won't. I do not want to keep a triple hat of just for triples just or a quad triples. hat. Gotcha. I don't want to keep those because the odds game. Sometimes when you don't have any other choice, we don't. We're, we're not all as advanced in our genetics, <laughs> as Kyle. <laughs> I, I don't have the choice sometimes. Like I got just got to keep everything that I got to play the long. Yeah, you got to play the long game sometimes yeah. for sure. For but sure. that's where I'm at now. The problem is you end up accumulating a lot of females. Like I'm going to need a lot of space for a lot of like. Yeah, I've got like pides that are triple hat for ultramel hypo and clown, and and I've got. You know, clowns that are triple head for ultra male hypo and pied, and and uh, you know, toffee clown pied projects, lavender clown pied projects, like all these different projects. And yeah, I mean, you, you gotta, you know, you gotta keep whatever you can. And I might only use them for a year or two. Yeah. But yeah. Once I get what I want out of them, then I, you know, then those go to someone else, and I pull back the next generation. But that's the problem, though, is getting what you want. Well, yeah. Yes. Hundred percent. That's yeah. the biggest problem. I mean, man. That's the biggest problem. You know, like, you know, I was telling, I don't know if I said it last week on that show, but like, you know, I asked Garrick how many Ultramel hypopides he made last year. He said like five out of 10 clutches. And I did, uh, I only produced three hypo clown pides out of eight clutches, but I didn't use any triple hats. I use a double visual hat to visual double hats. And I did eight clutches and I only got three. Oh, wow. Well, I've got a bunch of like with that particular project, I've got a bunch of 
uh, ultra milk pies that are possible or that are 100% had hypo and things like that. So like I don't, yeah. I don't really need the normal triple hats anymore. I've actually got a couple that I'm going to be selling and I've got a couple more that I'm breeding this year. Once they lay, I'm going to sell those too. Cause you know, even when you're, if you're breeding a hypo ultra milk pie to a triple hat, your odds still aren't that fantastic to hit sure. on that. So Eric has I, some chondros for sale right now, I think. I oh yeah, I, do. I, had a, to to? I brought. I, brought <laughs> I think I brought eight of them to Tinley. Nine of them. Yeah, they were Tinley. beautiful too, man. Oh, one wow. down there. I could not believe it. Really? I only sold one. Yeah, I had I had That's a couple other people that were that really wanted to get a couple other ones, but it I, for some reason or another just didn't work out for them. But. Yeah, I mean, I, I've been dabbling. I've actually been breeding chondros yeah. as long as I've been breeding ball pythons, just yeah. not in okay. numbers. <laughs> uh, you know, probably produced like 1% of the number of chondros that I've produced with ball pythons over the last 24 years. But I love them. And I mean, they're my favorite species of snake. I would, if I could only keep a very small collection, I didn't have to worry about an income from them or anything, I would have a... a a couple of cages with ball python or sorry condors in them and i mean those are they're my favorite species of snake i don't i mean yeah you can't really handle them but i don't feel the need to handle my oh, snakes like i'm beautiful. i'm fine just looking at them i want i want like a nice naturalistic vivarium live plants you know really do it up nice and just have a couple of condors in there that's that's like the ultimate for me same that's how I am with the carpet pythons. Like if I ever came to a point where I was like, I got to get out of breeding for whatever reason, uh -huh. I would still keep up. I would still keep the carpet pythons for sure. I got I got some uh, jungle carpet pythons from Dave and Tracy Barker. This is actually a Chad Fuchs story too. Uh, Chad and I in like 1994, I'm thinking it was, we went in on a deal. We bought like a group of, I don't know, I heard maybe like four or five uh, jungle carpet pythons from Dave and Tracy Barker from VPI. And uh, I had those for many years and they were awesome animals. Um, and then I actually got one from a pet store in uh, Wichita, Kansas that ended up being Don Soder, Soderbergs. Soderbergs? Yep, I heard that name. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it, it was actually his store. Um, and I didn't, you know, I didn't know him at the time. I just went in there and I saw, oh, a jungle carpet python, you know, and I bought it. Um, but yeah, I've had jungle carpet pythons for 30 years. I mean, not 30, oh, actually about 30 years now. Oh, wow. I don't have them anymore. I haven't had jungle carpets in probably at least a decade now, but they're, they're cool. You know, the, the crazy thing about them jungle carpets it's, right now, it's really hard to find the pure ones that are really, really nice at bright like yellow. Yeah, and, yellow. Like I, I had some too, and I sold them. I got one clutch out of the female and then I sold them all and, man but it's so hard and you know for a 300 dollars animal that black and yellow you can't you you can't touch anything 100 percent. a pure jungle Fred, carpet up. man the black mm -hmm. and yellow you can't there's nothing out there that, like it i mean there there's i forgot what that other snake is there's like that striped one it's not a kevin has some of them mangrove, Boega's mangrove the mangrove yeah yeah yeah, that Boaga or whatever. Yeah, yeah, those are beautiful. Yeah, those, but not like a, you know, I mean, not like a jungle carpet. Like I don't even the zebra jungle carpets, man. They just don't look that bright yellow and black. Agreed. Agreed. I was actually at Dave and Tracy's back. I did an internship um, just after, actually, just after I graduated college in December of '96. I I was already signed up to do an internship at the Houston Zoo. And I went down there and I got to work with all kinds of crazy stuff. Fiji Island iguanas, which are awesome. Um, and all of these. I, know I want things. them so bad. I know. And <laughs> I, I want them so bad. If I could get one thing, that'd be it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you can't have them here, right? Or No. Well, no, they're super, super protected. Got it. Got it. Uh, but anyway, I was able to um, spend a day. We went over to the San Antonio area and I spent the whole morning with Ron Tremper, who is like the leopard gecko guru. Uh, and he had he was like one of the first people in the U.S. to have bearded dragons and veiled chameleons. And I, so I got to uh, hang out at his facility all morning. And then I spent all afternoon at Dave and Tracy's facility. And Tracy wasn't there most of the time, but Dave was there and he had a couple of interns there. They actually had they've got this this place outside of Bernie, Texas, 
and they've got like um, their house up on the hill and then they've got this facility and they have it like an apartment attached to the facility and they'd actually have interns come and stay at their facility for months or a year or whatever and work there That's cool. and at the time they had some guys there from australia who actually got to work with more species of australian pythons at dave and tracy's than they were able to <laughs> oh, wow in the country. and it was awesome wow. I mean, this, so this is back in 1997 january 97 and i saw like the first clown ball python i saw the first you know some of the first uh, earlier albinos they weren't the first but early uh, some of the earlier hypo boas and albino boas and like wow. all these different things and they, they're the the total like the this diversity of that collection was incredible and that was really inspiring to me to actually i was already like i was already so far down this road i was going to be a reptile breeder no matter what it took at yeah. this point but yeah but it, it really showed me like wow i could actually do this and this is kind of how i need to have it set up so um yeah it was it was super it was just so awesome to be able to see all that stuff yeah that's nice, amazing, nice. so did the barkers produce the first clown I didn't, didn't the first one come out of the wild i would think yeah 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 well yeah but the first captive bred ones i think it was the barkers and brian barcheck where they got one at the same time or something like that that sounds okay. right. Yeah, sounds about right. Yeah, but I really yeah. think that Barcheck got a blade clown, and then, yeah, he did. and then, and then the Barkers they got no blade in theirs. Got it. So that's I where, the, and then the blade all came about in Bar in BHB's line of clowns. But the crazy thing is, I don't even know if you guys know the story, but Roland, the guy that originated the Stranger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That original female that produced that was a clown that he bought from Barcheck, I think. Oh, really? I think it was either from Barcheck or Craig Stewart up in yeah. Canada. It was one of those two. And the funny thing is, that same clown female that threw the stranger mm -hmm. also was part of that moray. Mm -hmm. really? So them both genetics were in that snake. That's that why snake. some... That's Doesn't why all the snake. stranger stuff now is getting to be with that moray because they all come out of that one clown female. Wow. Gotcha. Yeah, I didn't know uh, that. I didn't know that. Uh, back in day, I, the first time I ever went to Daytona, which is probably like oh, oh 06 or 07, we went down there just as basically like a family vacation, but I was able to, you know, I just went to the show all day and got to talk to people. That's when I first met Brian. And uh, he had some uh, what ended up being super blade clowns on there. They were just, you know, at the time we didn't know what, nobody knew what blade was. They were just super reduced pattern clowns. But I mean, they looked, they were, you know, the pattern were just right down the back and nothing else. And they were, it was so cool. And I, I remember just looking at those snakes, like, cause I had clown in my collection at that point, but nothing looked like that. Yeah, it was for sure. crazy how nice those were. Hey guys, we're gonna take a real quick sponsor break and we'll be right back. Let's do it. Peace and love, family. We invite you into the heart of our serenity, Ancestral Royal Pythons. At Ancestral Royal Pythons, we're not just breeders, we're nurturers of love and growth. Each of our high-end ball pythons is a tribute to the grandeur of the natural world and our dedication to quality. Reach out today and bring one of our creations into your home. This is Ancestral Royal Pythons. Your journey begins here. Here's to the exciting world of ebony and ivory reptiles. From unforgettable parties and events to keeping and hatching some of the dopest reptiles in the reptile hobby, we're all about education, quality, integrity, and respect. Hit us up and see how we can help make your next project a reality. Experience Ebony and Ivory Reptiles, where fascination meets fun. Ebony and Ivory Reptiles. Shout out to the sponsors, man. Matt hit the Ebony and Ivory Reptiles last week. Bro made my whole month bro <laughs> shout out to matt man that was amazing man uh real quick let me get my flowers away um yeah yeah i was about right back to, i was about to come right back to that appreciate it. see great minds bro great mind 
Uh, they in the chat right now. Um, it's it, you know the smaller breeders that I rock with. Uh, the homie Eddie from from Static Morphs, definitely uh, up and comer. A lot of heat, low key, super super quiet in the collection. Um, Dylan from Kaiju Constrictors, uh, Jesus from Rising Sun Reptiles, definitely been making waves in the game. Um, Ricardo from uh, Breeder Circle. Okay. Um, OG. I him. Yeah, yeah. OG. Uh, like Garrick said, uh, captive bred specialties for sure. Um, the two on the panel with me, of course. Um, just a bunch of greats, man. That's that's low key. I think uh, um, the nanny, the dude that founded the nanny gene, is in Milwaukee now or somewhere close to us now. So uh, I oh, can't really? think of his name. Kenny Aponte is that his name? Kenny Aponte's from uh, Puerto Rico, I think. No, then it's not Kenny. It's somebody else. Someone moved up here from down there. So him too, and Main Squeeze Reptiles, man. Big shout out to Ron. Uh, he actually works with Ricardo too. So. Yep. Uh, yep. I actually, I was just at Ricardo's not too long ago. He's a pretty, like I said, a really good guy. I, yeah, he's got his, cool. and his facility too is super uniform. Everything is matching the same and it's super, <laughs> oh. I mean, it's, it's pretty uniform. I got to go I see like his it. stuff sometime. I love like, even though my facility doesn't always look like it, I love like 90 degree angles, yeah. everything looking the same. Like that's my that's dream. Cool. I just love going into it and having everything looking the same. And yeah, I like that. I like to see that place. Yeah, I like uh I like the uniform look too. It just makes you feel like everything is neat, clean, and order. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's it's just it subconsciously makes you feel good. So yeah. Facts, facts. Hey, did you see this guy? Oh yeah. Yeah, I know Lenny. I facts. sold him his first banana. Yep, That's I facts. sold him. I think and then I know Dylan too. Uh, I sold him hypo some hypo clowns. That's dope. Yeah, Kyle is is the best when it comes to genetics. He I have him over, like he's here. He's at my shop once a week, and I have him help me ID stuff all the time because he's much better at it than I am. Today I almost told the guy, man, I got a lot to do. You know, this is gonna start costing you. <laughs> I, had a, I had I got someone that hits me up constantly, and he got like two, 300 clutches a year. And I'm looking at all kinds of things of his. And it's just like, man, it's hard to, it's hard to do all the rats and do all my own work and then try to, you know, do this and, and be on the phone and, and do the transactions and all that. And then nope. have to help identify, you know, <laughs> it's a little easier coming over to your place, Garrick. But when you get all these messages online, it's like, man, my, my brain is just fried. Oh, I know. I, I get them. I get them all the time too. Uh, and a lot of times you're like, well, can you tell me what kind of ball python this is? And you got no background information at all, like nothing. And it's like, you know, like you can take some guesses, but I mean, so many genes can have the same impact on different morphs. True. You just right. don't, you, it's so hard to tell, but I, I try to, I try to help people as much as I can, but yeah, with pictures, especially if they're bad pictures, nothing. I think worse. I'm going to just start saying to people, well, it's a het normal. Because, you know, yeah. pretty much everything is, you know. Hebosa, yeah, Hebosa. <laughs> man, it's a ton of genes, too. And, like, coming into it, like, as a new person, man, you can just get inundated with all the genes. So what right. advice do you guys have for, like, a new person coming into the game, trying to learn how to identify, like, these genes and how they're working in all these combos? Like, what would you tell them? YouTube. Um, is where I kind of picked it up from and having people like they just said, like being able to reach out to people and, you know, hey, is this what I think it is? Or I got an inkling that this is this, you know, that type of thing. But a lot of it comes from like uh, Austin, Billy, um, Chad Harwick, like those videos where they kind of focus on one gene, show you the gene. Show, Garrick does it all the time too. show you the gene and then they'll add something else to it. And then they'll show the gene with clown and then they show the gene and pot. You know what I mean? So you could see the whole spectrum of it. And it kind of helps you to zero in on the, the characteristics of that specific. Yeah, gene. a lot of it is just experience too. I mean, things that I'm that I hatched out five years ago when I hatched them out, I, I could, didn't really have a good feel for what they were. I can pick them yeah. up in, easily right now. It, it's just experience. You know, the more of them that you hatch and the more that you see, whether it's, you know, on your computer or at a show or whatever, you just start to figure out those little, the, the little uh, traits that, that signify that a specific gene is in there. But Great. yeah, it's, it's hard. It's always a challenge. And when you, when you're 
when you make a new combination that nobody has made before and you just you're not 100 percent certain on all the genes that are in there it's hard i mean sometimes you you know i mean now with genetic testing that'll it'll change things a little bit because we can we can figure it out a little bit easier but a lot sure. of times like we've just had to raise stuff up breed it to something simple so that you can hopefully pick out the genes in the baby so then you know you can backtrack it to figure out what was in the parents one thing mm-hmm. i'm going to say is be careful where you buy from and at least you know get, you know be really careful where you buy from at least the breeder that you get your animals from at least they've got they've got to have some knowledge you know they've got to have you know i mean that's a big thing because i mean look at the mandarin and how that kind of took a big turn for the worse for the longest time because i mean you know i seen mandarin years ago already but i'm like man that don't look like no that don't look like that picture that's a normal that's a normal i ain't buying that junk you know the stuff we see now yeah there's there's stuff out there but man i'll tell you what i probably would have bought a normal at that time because of the people just selling all those supposed mandarins you know i mean you know and and like eric said too hatching out all this stuff and my thing is with the genetics i mean when i was a broke kid with no money that's all i could do was look at pictures (laughs) <laughs> so that's that's how I got so familiar with everything, looking at them over and over and over. And then I even explained to somebody, too, like now, you know, when you hatch things, there's a lot of people. I mean, there's a ton of misidentified things on Morph Market. Let's just get that straight. And but another issue is. It's kind of like when you're out hunting, I don't know if any of you guys ever hunted, but like. When you're deer hunting and the star- sun starts going down and your eyes start playing tricks on you and you start seeing, oh, is that thing over there, oh, is that a deer waiting for it to move? That's like how the people are with the snakes. They just stare at it, but they want something to be there so bad that it really isn't True. there and their mind True. starts playing tricks on them. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like, yeah. You definitely got to have some good folks in your corner. Yeah, because I done done it too, like. I uh, you know the emotional more it's like it's yep. there it's there but you gotta have good people in your corner or you gotta keep yeah. it real with yourself man, man. i get sa- i mean yeah. i've already made some people really sad by telling them no that ain't it man yeah i'm sorry yeah. you know and i and i and sometimes it's it's not to be defensive towards them or like put hate on them it's just no man that's not really what that is i'm i, I it's just not here's pictures of other ones you know and that's legit too because yeah, nobody needs out, a really. yes man you know right. what i'm saying yeah nobody right. wants a yes man to just pump somebody's head up full you of know the, the other thing is uh sometimes when i can't figure out something sometimes i'll just put it on the shelf and i'll just let it grow for a little bit a lot of times it becomes easier yeah. to figure out over time over time I know, yep. like, kyle and i have looked at snakes that i've hatched out where we both came to the conclusion that it was one thing we look at the same snake two months later it's like oh no it's this <laughs> yeah where there, were, there could be more or less genes in it yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah. you know i a lot of times i always put stuff on the shelf and that's a lot of, a lot of the reason why it takes me so long to get some of my snakes up for sale too because i do try to kind of keep things until i can figure it out because i don't like to sell snakes without knowing what it is makes sense. if i ever do like some snakes, if it's not going to make a big difference if it has another gene in it or not, I'll sell it for what I know it is, and then I'll say, oh, it could also have this and this yeah. and this in it too. Yep, that's exactly but what I've done. Ideally, I'd like to know for sure what's in everything. Perfect. Shout out to the homie Scott from Morph Magic Exotics LLC. Appreciate the support. So he says, "What do you see uh, the industry in the next ten years?" Man. That's a good question, man. Uh, you don't want to. I, I see, it, I, I see it say. growing for sure. I, I, see, definitely, I definitely see the continue. Kyle. Yeah, Kyle, you gonna have to. Yeah, you, you go you last because we definitely want to hear. It. For sure, uh, <laughs> I see a lot of growth because I see a lot of um, continuous new people being introduced to the hobby, like every yeah. single year. Yeah. Uh, Antoine from High Desert Python said, "It's all of our duty to try to bring five new people into the hobby." every single year like each one of our as a breeder we should bring five new people into the hobby and i took that to heart uh so when i do my like if i'm vending a show or whatever if it's a little kid over there who looks sad hey come here hold the snake man take a picture with it you know what i mean go show your friends blah 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 and just 
pull people into the game. So I, I definitely see the growth continuing. Um, I, I see the market swinging back the other way too, like sooner than later, for sure. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, you know, the market goes up and down year after year. But well, we've the, been through this. The main thing, yeah, for sure. The main thing we want to look for is overall growth in the, the number of people keeping ball pythons and reptiles in general. We just, we want to see the percentage of people in the U.S. or even in the world gradually expand to, you know, a larger percentage of people keeping reptiles. I remember back in the, the 90s when I was working at a pet store when I was in college, um, we used to get these pet industry magazines all the time. And I think at the time, the, I, I would always read all the reptile related articles. And, and it said there was like 3% of all U.S. households had a reptile as a pet. And most of those had multiples. Mm -hmm. So I'd be interested to see like, what's the percentage now? Yeah, I'm sure it's, high, yeah. it's higher than three for sure. It's probably oh, yeah. over 10, I would think. Oh yeah, I I'm think thinking so. 15, 20%, yeah, for sure. It, it, it very well may be. And whether it's a bearded dragon or a, a, a leopard gecko or, or, or yeah. yeah, anything like that. But I think that the main thing is that, you know, if you can promote the animals positively and get more of those fears out of people and and get more people into the hobby and realize how awesome it is that that's just going to grow the, the the consumer base and so like for me for my business i'm not necessarily worried that much about producing the most expensive and the newest animal mm -hmm. i want to produce animals that look really good that the average person that i think the average person would like to have in their home as a pet you know like the and you know like the like I sell a lot of like three to five hundred dollar animals to people as pets. Blue and blue cystics. I sell them all all day long. All day. You know, and, and yeah, it's a very like if I just had a whole facility producing nothing but blue and blue cystics, I'd lose my mind because I'd be so bored. But, <laughs> but, but you know, the, the, it's people. But, but those things are the things that get people into it. And if somebody goes out and they they just want one snake as a pet, they go out and buy their blue and blue cystic. Well, how many? ball python hobbyists and breeders started that way getting one snake as a pet and then they got yeah. hooked on it yeah. so like i try to i'm truly really trying to produce especially this year i'm really trying to focus on affordable snakes that that the average person looks at and says wow that's beautiful i want to have that as a pet in my home and i'll pay four hundred dollars for it or five hundred dollars for it and i think that that's the best way to get people new people into this industry is doing that you know like uh, putting putting the snakes out there for people to see like on youtube and and on social yeah. media and getting new people into the hobby I, I really think that's the best thing that we can do to expand the hobby and to keep the industry going because i mean right now there there are more ball pythons out there than what we know what to do with and and uh it, we have to find new avenues to sell those animals and new people to get bring into the hobby to purchase those animals not just for breeding like you don't want to you don't want to always be selling every animal to a breeder or a potential breeder mm -hmm. you want some people just to take them as pets because if everybody that bought a, a female ball python from me raised it up and bred it oh man that's gonna be you know, over saturated so many yeah, ball more. pythons yep. yeah so what are your thoughts yeah I feel that, you know, I, I think the whole, the thing as a whole is growing, but I do think more ball python people are getting into other species. Agreed. You know, I, I do see a lot of ball python guys and it, it's, and it, and at that point, it's not just for the pure aspect of revenue. I see people getting into all kinds of different things, ball python guys. I mean, I know ball python guys that are getting gecko, you know, leopard geckos, you know, I think it's it's growing all around. I mean, it's not just the ball pythons. I I, I mean, I, you know, I I'm just kind of surprised because like you know I'd like to have some other things too. But like Garrick says, it's so hard when you've got everything dialed in and you you have a regiment and you know mm -hmm. about the animals and it's it's just hard to try to jump. I've had multiple things and I get things and I keep them for a year or two and I sell them and I do it again and again. And it's nothing is like a ball Python. You did that with your ball pythons for a long time too. You know, I mean, how many times since you started 
you you buy a bunch of different animals. You'd raise projects, them all, yeah, different projects. You start you you just be about ready to breed them, and then you're like, oh wait, no, there's these things out there that are better. I'm going to sell them. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. And then I, one day, I actually, you know, and I got my first albino in like 2002. So I mean, that was like right out of high school, and I. You know, I had one ball python. I got it from that pet store. And then when it come from there, I got a reptiles magazine and there was like pies in it. There was clowns in it. There was albinos in it. There was hypos in it. And I was like, man, there, there's, there was no codoms at the time. It was all recessives too. Yeah. So that, so when I started, I had, I was only getting those recessives. And as the, as the codoms came out, you know, I didn't have the 25,000 to 40,000 to buy those codoms. That's one reason, like, people ask me, well, how did you get so far with these recessives? Well, that was because I didn't have the $25,000 investment, so I worked with what I had. And originally, I had regular albino. I tell people, you know, I bred double-head albino pides, and I got two clutches, and they were like 6.3, two years in a row, 6.3. I stashed the money away and I sold all, I, I sold all those stashed the money away. And then I had the albino female and the pied male and I made some het pieds and I sold those too. And then I sold all the albino and all the pieds I had. And I picked up only double het lavender pieds. And that's how I got the dream sickles. Dream sickles. Okay. Okay. There was no candy and toffee <laughs> back then. You know, I mean, we can all, I mean, like I said, I was going to dr drop that bomb, you know, about the the toffee, you know, Garrick, remember that when I said, man, you got to breed that head toffee to a head albino and we got to see what's I going did, on. I did drop that bomb. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> when I hatched the first, uh, well, I don't know if they were, they weren't the first, but the first that anybody made public, the first Toffinos I hatched out because I, I got a het toffee from Craig Stewart and uh, I bred them from your suggestion. I bred them to a couple of head albinos and I produced a couple of albino looking animals that ended up being Toffinos. And that's what started that whole project for me. But I, I, I did a YouTube video. You got, I'm sure you could find it on. Yeah. Online. I look, Eric. I looked for it. It's not there anymore. It's so old. It's not it, on. It's probably on my old YouTube channel, The Crested Gecko. I looked there too. It's got to be there. It's somewhere because I've seen it. I tried digging there. it up for for Levance because I told him, no man. We were he, Garrick was the one that dropped that in public because I just the thing was is I knew that there was a guy up in Canada that did it too. He wanted to make more het toffees, so he just bred it to his head albino as a normal, and he made an albino animal, and mm -hmm. then it colored up. And yep. Craig Craig Stewart says to the guy, "Well, he was trying to pay him off in animals and all kinds of stuff." And then I'm like, "Man, this has got to come out. We can't." We can't sit here and lie about this. So I yeah. told Garrick, I said, Garrick, you got to breed these. You got to take a chance and you got to do it with a couple. I just to see what you can get. And yep. the first time it worked. Yep, it did. Thank you. Yeah, I, the video has to still be on my channel. I somewhere. saw it before. I yeah. saw it before. It's a okay. whole video. As soon, yeah, as soon as you said it backstage, I was like, yep, I've seen that. Yeah. So that video, was that That was the first time someone like publicly said something about the Tofino? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it was like 13 or 14 years ago. Yeah. How do people react to that? I mean, there wasn't the social media back then than there is oh, now, sure. so I actually don't really even know. I mean, if it, now it, it would have been just been everywhere online. If something, if a bomb like that was dropped right now, yeah, that'd be you know completely different than what it was back then. Oh, I it, that'd be like. And you, I mean, Kyle, you probably know more than I. I, I don't. I know really watch stuff on social media a whole lot. Like I don't get involved with any groups or chats or anything i like hardly that. do either that's the thing you know are i you, mean i come in i've been coming into podcasts and stuff a little bit more but mm -hmm. i mean like i said mj had to ask me for a few years <laughs> to get on his show i was not having it one other guy asked me to be on his show and i said well man i said here's the deal i'll be on your show but like we got to make a time for, for it to work for both of us and he come back at me hey you ain't telling me how to run my show and when you're oh, going to yeah, be on good. my show. You're, you're going to do it when oh, I wow. tell you. You're so good. I'm just like, bye. Yeah. And yep. that was it for, for that. You yeah, know? Things, are, things are very different 
now than they were even 10 years ago. I mean, it, it's crazy how different everything is. Like even I mean, we can see the, we can see the picture edits and all that, how that all went down. You know, I mean, the video that we just, there just was a podcast recently about miss, I, you know, the, the misrepresentation, misrepresentation of the mutations because the, the lighting and the camera view was off and it was just making the animal look way more than what it really was. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, dishonest I mean, practice should definitely be called out, man. So, like, salute to anybody who, like, I guess you can call them whistleblowers or whatever you want to call it. Salute to anybody who, like, you know, calls out people on a on a deplorable behavior. And like Justin, Justin manned up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He was like, "Yeah, bro, it was it was wrong. The editing was off. I didn't check it before it went out, and that's on me." And you they were in saying? a hurry to get that out before that show. And they wanted to yeah. get out before Tinley. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Like, I, feel, I feel like he handled it very well. He you know did. He owned up. It was, a, it was a mistake. I fucked up. Players fuck up too. Mm-hmm. That's it. Players. Yeah, fuck I up never too. even saw that video. It's not on YouTube anymore. So I. Yeah, I they took it down. They're gonna redo it. Yeah, it's, it's, I was on vacation when that video came out. I was on a. I was down in uh, Dauphin Island, Alabama, uh, on a, over in the Gulf Coast, south of Mobile. Nice. I was down there for a week, and we had very, very poor and limited internet access there. It's a good and location. It was fantastic. Just got to good, yeah. and just good way. just watch yeah. the ocean and watch watch dolphins and just oh, it was so nice. Did you see any reptiles wonder, down there? Not much, actually. It was weird. I I found a uh, there's a bird sanctuary on the island. That's nice. like the eastern part of the island is very forested. The western part is all beach, basically. And on the eastern side, there's a, a bird sanctuary. When migratory birds come in from the Gulf Coast, they land on Dauphin Island because that's the first landmass that they find, and then they continue north. And um, so there's like a, a lot of trails and hiking paths through there, and there's a big pond in the middle of it. Uh, there's an alligator that lives on that pond. In that pond, uh, there's an osprey nest on the oh, beach, nice. um, up in a like a pedestal. Uh, those are extremely rare raptor birds. Um, cool. And anyway, uh, we uh, the last day we were hiking in there, I found a couple of skinks, a uh, few anoles throughout the trip, um, and uh, a snake that I'm almost certain was a banded water snake, but I'm not 100 percent sure. It was it was it wasn't really banded. It was like banded part way up the body, but most of it was black. And I'm not super familiar with those versus water moccasins and there's water moccasins down there as well. Yep. And it, it was a little, it was only maybe like 25 to 30 inches long. And I, I actually grabbed it by the, by the back half of the body, but I wasn't so committed and I wasn't so confident that it wasn't something dangerous that I didn't make a huge attempt to catch it. And I kind of halfway let it go. I'm like, ah, I, cause the, the best case scenario, it's going to poop all over me. Worst case scenario, it's going to bite me. Exactly. And it's going to be a water moccasin and like a juvenile water moccasin and not a water snake. But I did some looking at pictures and stuff. I'm pretty sure it was just a water snake, but didn't want to take the chance. Yeah, I probably wouldn't have took the chance either. You don't want to miss no a vacation. No. <laughs> no. no way. Not too many hospitals on that island. It's it's a pretty small town feel there. There's no chain restaurants on the island or anything. It's it's a very uh like i said small town kind of feel it's, it was cool yeah. we've been down there i think this is our fourth trip down there and just absolutely love it that's cool that's that's what's up man so anyway i missed that video because of that i couldn't stream the video down there and um no, I, it, there. It, it was gone before i got a yeah. chance to watch it but i'm, I'm invested in the monarch pied project so I'm hoping are you was, yeah i mean i've, I've been i got i bought a monarch um, a few years, uh, maybe three years ago from, uh, Tom and, uh, it's, uh, you know, I bred him to some clown combos, some pied combos. So I'm growing all those double hats up right now. And hopefully, hopefully in 2025, I'll be able to produce Monarch clowns. It'll be 2026, I think, before I get Monarch pieds, but yeah, it's a pretty cool project. I like the Monarch a lot. It's a cool gene. Yeah, I, I like both of them personally, like Ultramail and yeah. Monarch. I personally yeah. work Ultramail, but yeah. I honestly like them both. And I think like they got some similarities, they got some differences, they do some different things, yeah. and it's room for yeah. both of them. 
yeah um, at agreed. the end of the day like i joke okay. around with like friends and stuff like uh me and uh my chat group with like uh unk and and justin and stuff because they like team monarch or whatever and so we've been going back and forth oh, just yeah. jokingly but it's, it's nothing serious because like i said i like both of them to be honest me too. Um, they both got a place for sure like it's I different color too. palettes like you said i do too like both but here was the thing too that was with like me i had lavender albino and mm-hmm. then i got pure candy and i had i had pied three four years ago i already had pied double head candy clowns and everything like that but i was so far advanced with the lavender stuff i gave up on the candy and i sold it all because i'm just like man i can't i can't do the best at one of them if i don't focus on one i can't do the best i can and that's what happened i i had ultramel and i had a bunch of it and then i bought i got some monarchs i had two a pair of monarch had g-stripes and I ended up just, you know, having them for a few months. And I'm like, man, I, I got to I gotta focus. Because if you can't focus at, like, one or two, two things or maybe even five, you can't do, like, you can't be where Justin's at or even close to it if you don't really focus. True. You true, know, true. And, and to me, it's I mean. Probably true at, for another trio of snakes. You know, like, <laughs> you know, like, like John true, Dagg, true. you know. I mean, you got to <laughs> hand it to, to that John Dagg uh I forgot what his company name is. JD Constrictors. JD Constrictors. You got to hand it to that guy with his TSK, his antics stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's nobody out there that has touched the surface like he has yeah, with that sure. gene. For sure. You know, so, I mean, uh, you were working the Ultra Kiki project too, um, but you sold it all? I did have some of that. I sold that too because I'm like, man, you know, I had a, I have a whole bunch of hypo G stripes. You know, I probably got 10 animals in the hypo G stripe but I have hypo G stripe clown and true ghost G stripe. I'm like, I just, you know, I mean, I don't want to work everything and I just, I can't, you know, and, and I mean, I do think that there is going to be a call for that because when you start putting more codom genes in that ultra G stripe clown stuff, Mm -hmm. I mean, we all know how to banana G stripe clown stuff looks as babies and the ultra is going to look like that as adults. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be badass. But I, I have so much clown pied stuff. Clown pied with all other recessives. I didn't want to really incorporate the G stripe because the the problem with the G stripe too is I just saw a G stripe uh, pied and a G stripe pied. I mean, it's nice. It's got a, like a different color palette to it, but you really can't see the G stripe in the G stripe yep. pied at all. I'm not trying that project at all, actually. I'm, yeah, it kind of looks like a pin pie, in my opinion. Yep. Well, and I said, well, I mean, here we can. I'll the color. Stick my foot. In, I'll stick my foot in my mouth on this one. But I, <laughs> I, I literally took a took a screenshot of the sunset clown pie, and I set it next to a pinstripe clown pie, both about the same size. And I said, man, them things look like identical. They could have come out of the same clutch, and you wouldn't even know the difference. You'd be thinking that pin. Pin clown pied was a sunset clown, sunset pied. clown pied. I got the pictures. I mean, <laughs> I, I don't want to, you know, like I said, I, I mean, you know, I mean, some, you gotta, you gotta admit it. I mean, some of the things are, are, uh, bangers and some of them are not, you, you do That's all right. that work and you don't get the satisfaction that you should have, you know, hundred mm-hmm. percent. and that's just, that's just the way it goes with the breeding. You know, you're going to get some that people are going to be going crazy over and you're going to get some that people just despise them, you know? So if that happens, do you do you pivot and put something else in there to to try to get it to what you want it to be, or do you do you sometimes like, you just got to scrap it because I mean you put all that time in there and then you put even more time in there and you add more to me. Boy, I don't want to set myself up. Less for is more. Go ahead, no bro. More. <laughs> I I don't want, you I know what you. I'm saying? I feel you. I mean, like, that's even like I was saying, not about keeping the triple hats and the quad hats. I, I don't want to set myself up for, you know, I mean, lucky we got the genetic testing stuff now, because if we didn't have that, it'd even be worse. Yeah. But I mean, could you imagine with some of these quad recessives, how many holdbacks you're going to end up having if you yeah, didn't have sure. the genetic testing? Yeah, for sure. Crazy. Sometimes it's just mean, a matter of putting in that that one extra gene though yeah, to yeah. turn a what what doesn't look like a good project into a great project too you're but right you're risky. right it's a lot of time and a lot, a lot of, of animals to exactly. do all that it's what's a specific hard. example of that um 
concept, Garrett? You think of anything off the top of your head? Oh, I don't know. Um, well, like the albino clown project. You know, albino clowns by themselves, they look awesome as babies. They look like nothing as adults. They're just a pale yellow snake with a pale yellow pattern to them. There's really nothing to them. So but now I the think- lavender clowns look good, but they don't look like lavender pides. Lavender clown adults have a real crisp white and yellow, but they don't have the purple like a lavender pie. They don't, yeah, they don't get the lavender in them. Um, but I think that, you know, like I've been working with the albino clown project. I've, I, I'm kind of stubborn when it comes to morphs. Like I've been, I've produced albino clowns for probably a decade now. And I, I just think like, okay, there's got to be some stuff that I can add into this. It's really going to make this project pop. And, you know, I've, so I've been focusing on mostly on adding in dark genes to it, like uh, black pastel, leopard, spot nose. Um, I'm actually working on adding acid and she, into it. And, and she too, okay. yeah. Um, so I'm adding all those in, hoping to produce better and better versions of them. Because I think that there is, there, there is a, a, a future where there's an awesome looking albino clown. It's just a matter of getting the right combination of genes. I think every every project has potential. It's just getting that right combo of genes in there. And that comes with a, just experience. And it was kind of having an idea about how one gene is going to interact with another one and trying to get all, all of it to match up in the same animal. Like I, I produced, you know, Toffino, uh, I've got leopard Toffino clowns. And they're nice. As babies, they're really cool. Uh, as adults, you know, they, they do fade a bit and you can't, you, you can see the pattern for sure, but it's just not quite as brilliant as what you'd hope. But maybe the pure toffee version of that, like a, a leopard toffee clown. Mm-hmm. Maybe that, I think them are going to be killer. I, I, I really, you know, like I said, I, I, I had both the toffee and the lavender and I kind of, I, I was a little toffee. more advanced with the yeah, lavender, but toffee. I kind of regret now getting rid of that and not toffee working with candy, the pure toffee. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. a pure toffee clown stuff is is way nicer than a lavender toffee, clown. Toffee clown. pie stuff blows dreamsicles out of the water. Oh too. yeah, definitely. You're, I mean, you're if, right. If you could add it, if so, all the different genes that have been then put have been put into dreamsicles so far. If you if there were examples of toffee or candy pies with the same genes in oh, there, yeah. they would blow them away, like absolutely destroy yep. dreamsicles. I agree. I, can agree with I that. agree. I can agree with that. So I'm working on it. I'm, yeah. I'm really, I'm really trying to do that stuff pretty. Didn't hard. you put a uh, calico or sugar into albino clown too? Not into albino clown. I have nope. a, a no. You made the sugar I, I've, lavenders. I've made the sugar Lab. lavenders, and those are awesome. Um, okay. I'm actually restarting that project with calico in it because I've been having some issues with my sugars. They, a lot of the babies just don't come out big and robust and healthy. Um, so the first year I produced the lavender sugar was two years ago. I've got one breeder male now, but um, all, the rest, I produced a couple more and they just didn't do well. Um, so, and I've never had any issues at all with my calico line. So I'm, I'm this year bringing an orange dream asphalt calico to some lavender albinos and some enchi lavender albinos. And so I'll get a bunch of uh, uh, calico combos that are het for lavender albino. So mm-hmm. I'm going to kind of restart it with the calico project. But because the, the look itself is awesome. Lavender lavender sugars are incredible looking. Oh, man, they are. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, that orange and the, the white coming up when they get a little bit of size on them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I got to get some calico in my collection. That's one of the genes is on my list that I don't have yet that I want to incorporate in some of my projects. It's Do a, any of you guys have super GHIs? Mike, you were whiz there? Not yet. I'm trying Not for them this year. I'm you, trying you for them You don't want to make super GHIs. You don't Hypo. want to make super GHIs. Why is that? We want to, I mean, some of them are, they don't do very good. I've had problems Probably. too. Yeah, okay. I know. Well, I know a lot know. of people that have had issues and called me, and and you know that's another thing that kind of need to be come out is yeah. about the, you know like I would say maybe two out of ten are okay or something like that. That'd be my oh wow. Too. 
I, 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 yeah, nobody I, like, said that. I didn't know well, that. not growing well. Like, what's what's the exact they, issue? You know, I produced. I probably produced the first G or Super GHI clowns. This is going back. I don't know four four or five years ago, and um, I produced two males, and they both died before they were a month old. They just wow. and I, I produced the first uh, Super GHI lavender albinos too. Same thing. They just hatch a little smaller, a little weaker, and they just don't do well. I do have a super GHI pied breeding right now, and he's healthy, but he had a slow start too. He wouldn't eat on his own. I had to assist feed him. He just just didn't do well. And um, for yeah, the for, reptiles I, just said he made one too, and it yeah, just Dale had said that too. Yeah. yeah, thank you for that. I, I've had I've had other people uh, that you know, like Steve Rusis called me once and asked me about it because he made some and had the same issue like mm -hmm. i said and and you don't know which ones are gonna you know you never know some of them do great and some of them just don't you know the majority of them from my experience from what i've seen they don't do great but there's yeah. some that do great no problem yeah yeah huh. yeah i've had a few that have come out fine they've been healthy and everything but yeah i've had a lot of them that have not done well i, I don't actively try to produce super ghis like at all because I wow. I really try to avoid having a high probability of having issues with any of the babies. Good there. to know, man. And this is the first time I heard this, so I appreciate y'all sharing that. Yeah, I'm definitely. Sure a lot that's of the kind of stuff. Yeah, that's the kind of stuff that should be out there. You know even, what I mean? Even like, you don't want uh, people wasting Rainbow, years. Rainbow was another one. I heard there's some issues with Rainbow. Oh really? Some oh, Rainbow. Really? There's some problems. Like I, I know, know people that tried making Rainbow clowns for years that failed at that. I know, I know they tried making regular rainbow type things and they failed at that. That's why originally, I don't know if you know, um, I forgot his name now, Carlos at OTB Reptiles. He has that yeah. mimic. Yeah, the yep. mimic guy. Yeah. The mimic was originally the, 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 there's one original mimic, but they bred, they bred the rainbow GHI, they called it because they produced it out of a GHI. They bred that to the mimic and they produced babies. They were mutts of the two mutations, but they weren't the same because the pure rainbow stuff that they had was not doing very well. But the mimic, pure mimic things are doing great. Oh, wow. Okay. So, I got to I mean, pay attention to that because I know, dig I, You know, and, and people want to know about the I Ultramel, you know, the Ultramel and the, and, the, and the Monarch. I haven't heard any issues with either one so far. I mean, I've, I've heard rumors about Monarch, but, you know, it, it's a newer one. So, people are, pe there isn't a lot of experience out there with yeah. it, you know. I, and I haven't really talked to many people with big, I've seen big Monarch on eggs, you know, no no problems. I mean, and the reason I really got into Ultramel, too, was because I love the caramel. Mm -hmm. You know, I love that caramel when that came out and yeah. all the caramel stuff. Yeah. I love that color and I love that project, but with the kinking and all the problems it had, I just got rid of all of it. Me too. Makes sense. You, you yeah. know, I mean, I, I thought it was a, they're, they're beautiful animals. I produce, <laughs> listen to this. I, this is going back a while. I produced the world's first caramel albino spider. <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> Where could you at? Could you love here? That <laughs> yeah, first one I was like in 2009, I think. Uh, did it thrive? Oh yeah, it did great. Yeah, no cases, really? no, no, no nothing. It, it it was awesome. Yeah, but I, I mean, you know, caramels do tend to have kinks and pro a pretty. I don't know what the percentage was. A good percentage of the babies that I produced overall had kinks and just kind of got tired of dealing with that after a while. And then when um, Ultramel started becoming more available, then I'm like, you know, Ultramel is like, it's not quite as good as Caramel. I, in my opinion, I think Caramel actually looks better, but it's close enough and you, you don't have those genetic issues. At least we didn't, you know, we didn't think so at the time and still to this day that they're fine. So Eric, uh, remember when you made that Ultramel by accident? Yeah, yeah. The one that didn't make it, but then you did make more and they made it. Yeah. Well, okay. So this is another little story. I'll try <laughs> to get through. I'll try to get through quickly. Uh, I love so it. So in year back in like 2003, Chad Fuchs and I actually bought a big group of normal females, like imports from Africa, little hatchlings. And so I think I kept a total of 30 of them because back then it was worth it 
to just raise up normal females because you're breeding to like your pastel males and your pinstripe males and you know producing ten thousand dollar clutches out of them so we bought we i bought a group of normal females i think i had 30 of them and one of them i bred to a i think it was a pinstripe for a couple of years and the third year i bred to a spider or no no i bred to a yeah the third one year anyway i bred it to a spider and I hatched out some babies and most of them were kinked up pretty bad. A couple of them looked like pastels and a couple of them looked like caramels or ultramels. And ultramels were just starting to become available at the time. This is probably like in 2008, 2009, mm -hmm. maybe somewhere, somewhere right around there. Anyway, so um, I had these things that came out of this, this normal female that looked like they looked like ultramels. And like, I wonder, so I bought, I bought a double head hypo ultra male male. So I figured, okay, I want to get two shots because yeah. these things could be just weird looking hypos or they could be ultra males or they could be caramels. I don't know. So I bred this double head hypo ultra male male to this normal female that produced these weird deformed ultra male looking things. And I had, I think there was 10 eggs in that clutch. I, I, I cut the eggs open. I remember just cutting so much anticipation cutting all these eggs normal 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 the last egg ultra mount like <laughs> so i have an ultra so i have this normal import female that ended up being het ultra mount yeah, ultra male. and wow. so i raised the and the, the one that i hatched ended up being a male and through the years i learned that he was het ultra male as well so what happened was that normal female had a parthenogenic clutch because all the babies were females. I never thought of that. I yeah. Well, it took it took me a few years. It took me a lot longer than it should have to come up with that conclusion. At first, I thought like, okay, that spider ball python that I bred to that normal female that they had to have been both hat for the same thing. No, it wasn't that. It was just that this this ultra male female had a parthenogenic clutch and she reproduced the hidden the gene visual. she had, which was ultra. That makes sense. So all my ultramel stuff is all really heavy with hypo too. So like I, I'm having like any of my ultramel projects, I'm having hypo ultramels and things popping up all the time because my original male double hat bred that female and then I kept back babies from that and oh, gotcha. progressed okay. it forward. So yeah, I mean, I've got like, I just produced a hypo ultramel clown last summer. And I had no idea at the time that my double head uh, ultramel clown female was also a triple head. And same thing with my uh, ultramel or hypo ultramel pied project. I thought I was breeding double head to double head. I was actually breeding triple head to triple head. And I hatched out a male hypo ultramel clown or hypo ultramel pied, raised that up, and now that's my primary breeder, and I'm producing them pretty regularly now. So that's a big surprise. Yeah, hey, I'll take that. Yeah, <laughs> shout out to the homie Jeff. He said we had 75 people and 57 likes. Make sure y'all smash button. that like button, man. They're telling these great stories, man. Dropping a lot of knowledge. Hit the like button, sure. show some respect. Appreciate you. So, what's the uh what's the unpopular opinion uh you hold about ball python breeding with? Unpopular? Unpopular. I feel like uh I mean <laughs> As simple as it is, I hate that people be like, oh, it's super easy to breed ball pythons. Like, I could just, you know, like, because it is. Like, I hate the fact that it's so easy, but the difficulty comes in the odds games and 100% getting the best examples of the specific genes that, you, that you're working in. So, granted, like, getting eggs is definitely an easy process. You put a male in there two or three times, you probably going to get eggs. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not that difficult. But... Mm -hmm picking the right male and putting that in with the right female. And then you got to wait for the odds game. You know what I mean? So that, that part just kind of, Oh God, here he goes. Uh, so that part gotta, that's the head red example. Yeah. Man, I'll tell Shout you what though. I, I got some of that hat red and, and like, you know, I mean, people pretty much wrote that off and that Kenny Aponte was dropping some pretty crazy looking combos on that podcast. That one night I saw, it's With the not red axanthic. It's definitely one of the sleeper genes that I, as much as I hate to admit it because of prophecy, but I definitely pay attention to it now. Definitely pay attention, especially the super. The, I mean, the yeah, red the, 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 the actual red axanthic. Do you yeah. want to know? 
well, here they're talking about all the red A Xanthic and everything like that. Do you guys know where that came from? Where is that? The red A Xanthic originally was captive hatch babies imported by TSK, and Corey Woods bought a pair, and they were making jokes about them not proven out or something, and he made the first red A Xanthic with two captive hatch babies that he bred that he originally got from TSK. I remember it like it was yesterday. I remember TSK that too. Was selling, TSK was selling those on their website, Captive Hatch Babies. This was, man, I don't even know how long ago. But that's where that's where the hat red originally came from was TSK, not okay. Corey Woods. Corey they Woods sold probably, it to him. I think Corey's working it harder than everybody else that I know of, though. I mean, he's always posting... Man, he yeah, got some crazy puzzle. Link his that name. hypo, the hypo red azanthic stuff with the puzzle. Man, he got some that are like silver. They're crazy yeah. looking. Oh, nice. The color Purple palette completely silver. changes for sure. Yep. That's a gene I've never cool. really gotten into. I've 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 owned one for a short period period of time. I got one a banana one in a trade, and I never ended up using it for anything. And yeah, it's, for some reason that. You know, it's hard with so many different genes out there. You just can't have everything. You really right. want to pick and choose your projects and focus on them and, and just choose wisely which projects you're going to get into. Um, you know, even with as big of a collection as I have, I just can't have it all. And Kyle, sure. I know you're the same way. You're trying to like trim your stuff back a little bit and and you just can't have it all. Like The thing about Het Red too, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, I mean, the super is really awesome and everything. But I mean, Hat Red is also in the cinnamon and the black pastel complex. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you get you get the duck bills and the. Oh, do you? I don't. I don't oh, really? think with the Hat Red you get like a lot of kinks, but you get the duck bills on the noses. You know where their yeah. their yeah, they like faces are kind of smashed out. a little bit. I didn't even know that. But oh, that's really? the, even with just one copy. Uh, I think that it's like when the the gargoyles. <laughs> Are the ones that have the problems. I I don't know about the 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 red azanthic, the super red azanthic, mm -hmm. if it has issues. But that's also like the Huffman. I don't know if you guys ever heard of the Huffman. Yeah. The super mm -hmm. Huffman is really awesome, and it has uh and it doesn't have any problems. But the the slick or the the cinnamon version of the Huff the cinnamon Huffman combo or the black pastel Huffman combo. They kind of can have problems. They they can oh, get really? kinks and and the duck bills. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. But the super by itself, I don't think has any problems. Good to know. That's good to know. All yeah. kind of knowledge I got some tonight. In my, um, collection too. I dig Huffman, man. Yeah. I don't got it. I dig it though. I definitely that busy. That color palette is a little different. It's super like granity. I dig it, man. Do you guys know what the slick is? What's That's that? The Huffman Black Pastel. Or the Hypo Huffman Black Pastel. I don't know if you guys ever saw that. No, I don't know. Hypo Huffman Black Pastel, no. Yeah, it's like a stripe snake that's silverish gray with like a little bit of pattern and a stripe. Um, I really want to try to produce the clown version of that. But the weird thing about it too, though, is that animal also, they have a third nostril. What? Really? They literally have a third nostril. They have a Whoa. hole in the top of their nose, like it's a third nostril. All of that's them? insane. Most of them, as far as I know, yes. I, I've wow. I've not heard of I, everyone I've heard of has had that third nostril, but I'm not sure. You know, yeah. Black Pastel and Huffman, they yep. all have like when they're together, they had a third nostril. That's good. They have know. like a third nostril. That's why. And that's a lead combo too, right? Yep. So yeah. everything got to be one or the other. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah, but the Super Huffman, I, I like the Super Huffman. Yeah, it's got, like, the white and stuff. But, I mean, yeah. there's so many things out there. That's the thing, too. There's so many things out there to work with. I mean, with all the codoms, you got Lace, you got Huffman, you got, you know, Dude. I mean, it's just, it's endless. I love Lace, man. Oh. You know, there's just so many things. I mean, even the Hat Red, we haven't seen a lot of Red A's, like, the, the Red Super A's fun. Anthic combos. Yeah. Agreed. That's what uh, Prophecy always preaches, for sure. Like, I just want somebody to actually put some work in, you know what I mean, with, with Head Red and show what, it's, show what it's capable of, which I can agree with. Mm -hmm. yep. I definitely can agree with. 
every every project has potential. It's just okay. it's just a matter of getting the right genes mixed in with it. Every project, yes. putting it putting it together for sure. So, guys, are there uh, any other uh, genes you can think of that people don't talk about the issues with them a lot that we hadn't discussed? I'm trying. I'm to soaking think. this all up. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely paying think. attention because that super GHI blew my mind. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I, I've, you know, <laughs> lavender albino, like I've hatched a bunch of lavender albinos with small eyes, but that comes mm -hmm. with pides too. You can hatch pides with small eyes. I've never um, had like, either. Like the, the lesser, lesser pides also have like a lot of, a lot of the lesser pides have small eyes. I actually produced a bamboo pied. I, I still have them. Uh, he's got small eyes too. And I don't know, you know, at the time this is, I probably have had him now for five years. And at the time, you know, wasn't really sure like how that would interact with pied. And yeah, it's an all white snake. It looks like a black eyed cystic basically, but it's got small eyes. So, I mean, they do fine. I mean, I, I've, well, sure, lavender yeah. albino too is another, like a lot of my, you know, when I was first starting to produce dream sickles, like the first ones I made were kind of picky eaters, mm -hmm. but, but like once they got going, they were, they were perfectly fine. Oh, you my. Know? And, and a lot of them now that I've hatched out in the last few years, never any problems with them, you know? Yeah. I've never feel like you can go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go oh, ahead. I just said, I've never really had any issues with any of my lavender albinos or my dream sickles. They've always been yep. really powerful eaters. I was just gonna say, do you feel like you can? Um... My first ones were inbreds, though, too. You know, they all are to some point. Oh. I yeah. mean, they are, but like you know, I you know, I got that because I sold you that lavender albino, so yours really kind of weren't so close. That lavender albino hepide I sold you way back, you know, they weren't so close where mine were like literally inbreds. I mean, same clutch, head to head. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yeah, and that's where mine mine for the. But the first three I made were kind of a, a pain in the butt to get going. But then after I started outbreeding it a little bit, like I have no problems now. I do have, I mean, I've hatched a few with small eyes, but n none with no eyes. I mean, everybody knows like pides. I've hatched plenty of pides over the years with one eye, never no eyes. Hmm. You know, I mean, albino ball python or albino boas. I don't know if you guys even know about the albino boas, like peak call line albino boas like you should never really breed an albino to an albino because you get so you get you'll you'll get a bunch of babies in there you say you get 30 babies well you probably get five or six with one eye or no i have, or that. No I eyes. have heard that yeah i had that yeah. happen yeah, yeah back when i first started working with the albinos i think my first my first litter of those ever i think i had four albinos in the in the litter and one of them only had one eye or maybe two of them i think it was only one the but, funny thing that's crazy though is you can literally take those one eyes. They, some of them get like it's almost like a crustiness where the mm -hmm. eye gets like crusty, like an infection. Yep. And and it just never really recuperates from that. But it's funny because I've heard of people taking the one eyes, albinos, and breeding them to like an IMG combo het, and mm -hmm. all the babies hatch out perfect. Yeah. Really? Yeah, they all cross. They're fine. All the babies are fine. So it's yeah. just albino to albino. But, okay. but I've never had any issues with any of my lavender albinos or my pies. I've never hatched any of that stuff that have had no eyes or one eye. I mean, I, I have babies occasionally that have one eye or no eye, but it's spread a, a across. All That's kind of how it was for me with the pies. I mean, issue. haven't hit too okay. many. That makes I mean, sense. Mm -hmm. You know, that I mean, every, everyone thing. gets an issue here and there, you know, yeah. <clears throat> but nothing like a, a genetic, like the, like the super GHI, you know, that's, I mean, I've talked to multiple people with the, with the issue, you know, mm -hmm. with the super GHI and like the super cinnamons, the super black pastels, you know, we all know, everyone knows about that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I can't think of any other mutations that I've heard of or even know of that have any issues besides what we've already talked about. You know, funny thing is I've actually had that I can remember right now, I've had a total of three parthenogenic clutches. I actually think I've had more than that, but I can remember three specifically. One was that head ultramel that produced the wonky um, kinked up ultramels. Uh, the other one I had a black pastel or no, it was a cinnamon 
that ha- I had a parthenogenetic clutch and I got super cinnamons out of it when the, the pairing that I did could not possibly produce yeah. both. And I got some kinked up. And I also had some super, I think it was super champagnes produced once too through parthenogenesis. Wow. And, and I, you know, obviously I didn't, I wasn't going for that. I, and I would never try to make a super champagne. Yeah. I brought something completely different to it and I hatched a clutch out and, you know, there are all these babies that, so it, yeah, it's just weird the way. I stuff. did hatch out a really interesting partho clutch last year. I bred a pastel, uh, pastel azanthic DG to an azanthic clown. Some of the babies in there were from that male and some of them were partho babies because I got snow clowns. Two female snow clowns. I had the guy that I got the azanthic clown from. He went way back, and originally he used a head albino like seven or eight years ago to make mm. his original he- uh, double het azanthic clowns. Something with the normal. I think he had a breeder, a breeder male, and then he used a normal or a head albino to make more double hets, mm-hmm. and uh, that's how he originally. And then I ended up proving that female out last year by getting two partho snow snow clown partho babies, and I I just gave them to somebody, you know. I remember when you told me about that. That That's was last, crazy. last summer, was it or? Yeah, last summer. Mm-hmm. Yep, yeah, one of them ate either. perfectly fine, never had any issues, but the other one was a problematic feeder. But I just gave them both away to somebody because I mean, from what I understand, is most most partho. They just don't do well. I know somebody else that has even got clutches out of partho and like you get maybe one baby that'll end up living. They're just not prolific breeders. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a defense mechanism basically to keep the species alive yeah. so somewhere. Some of them can produce, but it's very highly unlikely. Mm. I'm sure the genetics are super weak and, and like fragile. You know what I mean? And yep. Yeah. For sure. You have to add some new genetics in there to to bolster that, and then, like you say, it's just like a like a survival thing. You know but what I, I mean? Make the baby also like I've heard of berms having plenty of berm people having partho, partho. clutches with berms. Oh really? And they make I don't it? know, if, and I don't know if they're the same. If if it's if it's something where it's you know I think even <laughs> Barcheck possibly could have had um, them boas. I don't know if that's even possible. I thought he said something about partho boa litter. With that, uh, not a boa, but the uh, anacondas. I don't know mm-hmm. if if. Oh, I do remember hearing about that. I do something, remember yeah. I, I don't know if that was a part though, or if one of them was missed sex and they had a pair in there and they ended up having babies, or how that all. I went. do remember hearing. I about thought that. he said yeah. it was a part though. I think it was, if I recall correctly. I think it was a part though. I mean, did you any of you guys see that? Uh, I'll bring that up now. Did any of you guys see that albino? Anaconda. Yep. At saw the that show. Man, saw that, that was tindy. killer. Eric, did you see that? I didn't see it at the show. You didn't see it at yeah. the show? Mega oh man, you should have show. seen that. That thing was really? insane. I don't have time to get out from behind my booth. I know. <laughs> I know. That I honestly, wish I did. I think honestly, that's one of the only snakes I really went out and really, really looked at was that, yeah, that albino was anaconda. It was I wouldn't awesome. even have known where to look for it. Yeah, it was awesome. She, yeah, Mega kind of had it. It was, it was. Okay. It, she had two of them. Yep, oh, two of them. Yeah. I've yeah. seen yeah. pictures. Oh, of was it a uh, was, was it young or old? How big? Was they, it? Were they were young. They were probably two and a half feet long. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But bro, the color I can't even describe the colors. Like it, it, they're awesome. Mm-hmm. I can't describe the colors. I well, can't. Kelly gotta get a bunch of them. Well, start, she, start well someone <laughs> asked her how much she gonna <laughs> sell them for at the show. She said, right now they're priceless. I'm not yeah. selling any of them. You know, they had a, they did have one litter before that. They ended up all dying. They were premature babies, and they lost them all. And these are Man. the first successful ones. They look amazing. She's on TikTok. They're super big and healthy. Yeah, she's on TikTok sometimes. And, man, it's funny watching her. Like, one time I was seeing her in a video. She's cleaning. And all of a sudden, she leaves the cage open. She just puts the water bowl in there, turns her back, and that thing the whole water bowl, bowl spills and it fills her whole back with water. Oh. You know? I mean, it's a water bowl like this big and she, oh. she just turns around and it just slams it with its body and it just tips the whole thing over right on top of her, you know? Sounds like a lot of fun. 
I mean, yeah. yeah. And, and I, I seen her, she had some breeders at the show too. And they were, man, they were relatively small. So, I mean, I was kind of impressed with the small size of them. Yeah. I, had so some I think even retics, you know, I've, I've talked to other people about retics. I mean, you get staying, staying, you know, 10, 12 feet, some of them, you know, mm -hmm. and they don't get that. You don't have to get them giant. Yeah. True. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, I had some issues this year, like with some clutches uh, coming out the egg too early, not absorbing the yolk. And it all was from like one male. And so I was wondering if it was like linked to that male. I'm only going to put him to like one or two girls this year because uh, I don't want to like produce a whole bunch of clutches that have issues. But I do want to know. Did you cut them or did they come out before? Did you have, let wait for them to pip? So I would wait for like one or two to pip and I would okay. cut the rest. Yep. Um, and that's so fine, that's how right? I always do it. And it was, yep. it's crazy, man. Like some of them had hard belly. Like I lost a red stripe, uh, leopard confusion clown. Oh man. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I was, I was, it was a female oh, too, man. That, I was, that, that, that hurt <laughs> right? the gut punch. I had Ooh. something really weird happen last season. I never had it happen <laughs> before. And it happened with one egg box in my incubator. I bred a, uh, OD leopard yellow belly clown pied to an ultramel clown possible hep pied. Mm. And I got six eggs out of her. And then I also had that same day, I had two, I had an uh, clown het ultramel lay 12 eggs. So I took two of the eggs and I put them in this egg box with the other ones. And I cut the eggs and one pipped, I cut the rest and I cut the other two from the other clutch that were in the same egg box. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden I had, what was it? Two. Yeah. Two. The, the ultra male clown possible have pied proved out. I had a leopard orange dream, yellow belly clown, double head ultra male pied stuck its head out and died. And then I had a leopard clown pied head ultra male stick its head out and die. Damn. That's crazy. And then I had one of the babies in the other clutch from it that was in that same egg box. That was an ultra male clown and it stuck its head out and died. Wow. That whole other clutch, the whole clutch from that, the rest of that clutch from that other female, that one with the two ultra male clowns, that whole clutch hatched perfectly fine. So I don't know if it was something in that egg box wow. or what. That's, I've never that's... seen nothing like that yeah, before. Yeah, that's crazy. You yeah. know, and, and so, I mean, it, it just, maybe it was just a fluke. I don't know. And, and the rest of the babies that hatched out of that clutch were perfectly fine. You know, there was, there was four babies in that clutch that made it and they're doing perfect. I mean, you know, I, I, I don't know. Sometimes I think that stuff just happens. Yeah. Yeah. You know, That's and, and people were like, well, you talk to me about inbreeding. Well, I bred an OD leopard clown pied that really was probably many generations different than the ultra male clown that was a possible hep pied. So it wasn't like inbreeding or anything like that, you know, yeah. real close. So I, I don't know, you know, sometimes I think stuff just happens randomly. Yeah. 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 Genetically tough, inferior though. creatures, man. I, I did have a pewter banana hatch out years ago, man. That was a kick a in the balls. Ago. You know, I mean, That's when tough. I first got my, listen to this. So when I first got my first but pewter banana, they were it was eighteen thousand, and I got wow. him at Tinley. He was sixty eight grams at Tinley, and I had him breeding in February, October, November, December, January, February. He was six hundred and like fifty some grams, <laughs> and I had him breeding, and man, I bred him to a pied, and I got one pewter banana het pied. Well, it, for some reason, it come out and the whole thing, like the whole egg yolk was all ripped apart and it was leaking out of the, you know, where it was. Well, I took it and I sewed its belly closed with dental floss. I literally sewed the belly closed Did it with make dental it? floss. Oh, it Did made it, make it. It made it. But here's, here's another kicker about the whole thing. It made it. But that's when banana pies that following season were like $8,500. And mine was a damn female. It was mm. it was a female banana, 
And and mm. it, if it would have been a male, I would have had banana pies right along with the rest of the people yeah. that were just right. starting the banana pie stuff. I would have had them, but I had a female, so I had to raise her up, and I got two clutches out of her. And yeah, she was she was perfectly fine, but man, I was hoping for a male, and I got a female. And the funny thing was, Sean Bradley says, "Man, the dad to that animal, I had seventy two bananas before I got a female." Wow. You know, Dang. and I popped out two the first year. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. 72 males to get one female, and I popped one out within like 10 babies. Banana's so yeah. weird, man. That sex link gene is so weird to me. That was so Fair. scary when those things first came out, and there was a whole controversy about male maker, female maker, and what we didn't know about it at the time. Yeah. And, and <laughs> I remember, Kyle, you were pretty involved. I got in put that. in the fire in that one. <laughs> yeah, you oh, really? <laughs> but it was all true. Everything I said was all true. That was what was funny. You know, and they, and, and they can never take that away from me because, I mean, I really told them like it was. I said, man, prices are going to drop on them. I said, if you want to get in on the project, you can get in on it. But, man, you're going to get all male babies. Kept it real. But yeah, it's I mean, so weird that banana, the banana gene being sex length like that works like that like what other more yeah. no other ball python morph what other animal i don't even know another animal yeah exactly like that nothing but what about that lizard that's all partho babies i mean there's that one lizard that has all parthos there's yeah no but males. that's that's completely different than the banana no you're male, right male maker feet no male nothing male, else yeah, i've ever heard of easy. is male i male do maker know of female. one other thing that I switches know generation of... after generation I do know one other one other thing, another animal that is is like that, sex linked, calico cats. Oh, oh really? Believe yeah. it or not, calico cats, they're all I think they're all females. Really? It's very know. hard to get a calico Can cat you get a male maker though? No, they're they no, it's it's for some reason they're every calico, I don't you know, because when you the genetics are different, but every calico cat 95% of them are females. That's wild. I but, didn't know but that. With ball pythons or the bananas, it switches. Like, it's it's you, opposite, you yeah. Female maker. Like, how can yep. it, it just, I don't, yeah, weird. that's the part that I don't get. And I've, I've, uh, at, cause, uh, my doc, the, well, the doctor that I work for, she's mm -hmm. very, um, knowledge driven. Mm -hmm. She knows a lot about genetics and like just like because dogs have certain mutations, you can't give them a certain chemo if they have a certain like genetic mutation, stuff like that. And oh. I asked her about it and it just blew her mind. She's like, what? I, I never heard of anything like that ever in my life, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. So it's pretty crazy, man. I've never I don't get it. But Mother Nature is wild. Yeah. Well, yeah, I remember when I, you know, like like you said, that's the only ball python I've ever heard of anything like that. I think it's yeah. the only reptile that I've ever heard of anything. It's the like only that. animal that yeah. I know. Well, yeah. now I know a calico, but I've never. Yeah. Had that was the first time I heard that too. What I thought would be interesting is because I know people have created them already. What about if you would in, if you make a hybrid like a blood ball with it? Because uh, um, Jaggernaut made those banana um. I don't know if they're short tails or blood pythons. He bred a like a you know the hybrid, like a blood bo blood oh, ball or whatever ball, yeah. with the banana. Yeah. Now will will the will the mutation work the same way it, when you've in, oh, when you put a in another species. species? Aha! There you go. Will it work the same way? See, I don't know. I'd have to ask him. That's yeah. See, you know, that's I mean, some good science right there. You know, I mean, project right there. Yeah. <laughs> We're playing do with science. I mean, breed, do the hybrids breed like a blood mix with a uh, ball python? Will those babies breed later on, or is yes? It just like uh, they, from what I gather, like always with any hy hybrids, like with the first generation of like blood balls, you get lower fertilities. Like the 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 babies, some of them just don't thrive and do good, mm -hmm. but the ones that do live. They thrive and do awesome, and yeah. then they have babies, and there's no issues at all. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Same thing with um, Angolan ball pythons. You know, I mean, the a lot of people ball. are against hybrids, but I always wanted to take an Ang 
and Golan and breed it to an albino ball python and then slowly breed out the albino, or I mean slowly breed out the ball python to try to make an albino and Golan. And the only thing you would have, you know, kind of like they do with the super dwarf retics with the regular retics, even though they're the same, one of them is a mainland and one of them is a super dwarf from, from an island. But, you know, how they kind of mesh those together to get all the colors in the in there. I wanted to do that with a, with an Angolan python, but I got crucified by a lot of people for saying, <laughs> how, can, how dare you? How dare you want to create that mutt? And, you yeah. know, I mean, but I just wanted to do it to try to see what an albino Angolan would look like. Look like. That'd be cool. Meanwhile, there are carpondros and all these other different. Oh, yeah. Mixed mixed species things all over well look at green i mean i don't know if you know about green trees green trees are like every locality is almost like a subspecies okay did i don't know if you know that but i didn't the, wasn't really aware of that yeah like each green tree like a maruki or the bx or whatever they're all like a subspecies of each hmm. other they're not they actually they're have not, that classification now i don't know I don't know if that's scientific yet, but it might be a theory. I think it is, but it's just something that's not really talked about, kind of like okay. a lot of other things out there. But you can, I mean, <laughs> I you, mean like with boas, you can breed, breed an imperator with a constrictor. Yeah, like the leopard boas with a, yep. Yeah, the different subspecies. BCI of to a BCC. All right. Like dogs. Yeah, some poor people. Oh, get like, mad yeah, look that. at dogs been mixed up for centuries. Yeah, that's like true. They got fluffy Frenchies now, dude. I've seen like a mini husky or something like that. It was like, a, I've seen that. Oh, wow. I'm like, you're doing a lot. Labradoodles and the golden Labradoodles, doodles. Doodles all day. Yep. Yep. Crazy, though. Like, my sister, she's got one of them golden doodles and man. They're like really good hunting dogs too. Yeah, they're they're great the, dogs. Uh, believe it or not, poodles. poodles are like one of the one of the they're great dogs. Best best uh, retrieving dogs. If yep. you, I mean, you wouldn't oh, really? think of you know they get them shaves and they get them puff balls on them and all that. <laughs> they're the best one of the best retrieving dogs that's out there. Mm -hmm. Nice, you know. Nice. But yeah, getting back to the snakes, I mean, like I just you know, there's so many different things out there and to do yet, or we had like like I was saying with the bananas and the blood pythons, I mean, is it going to be a sex link mutation then? You know, I don't know. You know, there's, there's things that we just haven't discovered yet. And I mean, unless you get people like weird Al playing in their place, <laughs> you know, you're not going to ever be able to know any of that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Somebody's got to do it. Somebody got to yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. All right. Hell yeah. All right, guys. Well, we're over two hours been, already. Yeah, I was just about to say, I can't believe it's been Fast. two hours already. Every time, yeah, went by quick. It was fun. Six yeah, hours, it was a lot sure. of fun, and it's a ton of knowledge dropping. Six hours. Y'all really, y'all really blessed the channel. <laughs> yeah. Definitely, definitely. You know, and if blessed I think me. of any more genetic mutations that have any kind of problems, I mean, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll think about it. But I don't. Yeah. I think I got Message it all me, covered. bro. Yeah. DM right. me. Let me know for yeah, sure. I need to know. Yep. Heck yeah, yeah. I that's that the kind of knowledge that can yeah that's the kind of knowledge we need to be able to share with each other like the whole the whole transparency thing needs to needs to be legit man we need to you know what i'm saying keep each other informed keep each other abreast of new new mm -hmm. developments and stuff like that so that way new people not making the, the same dumb mistakes we did you know what there's i mean one so, thing though right. I, there's one project that pretty much i don't know anybody's working on right now or there's very few but remember the 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 platy daddy yeah the hat daddies. Of those. You got yep. some of those? I produced one platy daddy just randomly out of what a 12, 13 years of working with lessers. I just randomly half shot a platy daddy two years ago. But do you oh, know wow. what you know what? But do you know do you know how they're created? Not really. <laughs> oh, well, this is how they this is how they were originally created created. The original platy daddy that came in when you bred him to normals, right? You made you made lessers, but those normals in there were hat daddies. Hat daddy, yeah. The only way you could get back to the platy daddy was breed to breed the lesser to the hat daddies. Okay. And I think they can do that with Mojave too. You could take a Mojave since in since it's in the BL the BL complex, you can breed a Mojave to a hat daddy and make a Mojave daddy. Yep. <laughs> oh wow. Okay. That name is kind of 
I don't know. I don't know I how know, much I, mean, I like I, to say I, daddy, you but know, we haven't seen <laughs> that's that's all we haven't seen some of that stuff for so long. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, I, mean, I was shocked when I hatched that clutch. I'm like, what in the hell is this? Yeah, that's had to be <laughs> crazy. <laughs> like, and then I had to really think about it, like, okay, uh, yeah, okay. I guess that's a platy daddy. Like that's it was weird. That's cool. <laughs> that is cool. But yeah, we definitely gonna have to get y'all back on the show um, again. Uh, no, we'll do this anytime, anytime. Yes, definitely. definitely. Yeah. So y'all want to plug anything before y'all um, before we get out? Um, well, I guess I could plug today that I've got a huge sale going on. I just started on. A, we're doing a sale from tonight at twelve oh one a.m. through Monday night. We're doing a huge sale. Like. I need to move out animals. I need to make no space diddy. for new babies. Daddy. So um, just check out all my <laughs> social medias. Check out RoyalConstrictorDesigns.com. Uh, I've, Heck yeah. I, I've awesome like sale. Some snakes. So, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I've sold uh, Patreon members, got it a couple days early. Okay. And, and I've sold a lot of really nice snakes for a lot of, like, for deals that I'm almost uncomfortable with. <laughs> but... <laughs> You know, I, I yeah, I've moved out a few nice, really nice animals, and I've got, I think I have like 695 animals on the website right now. So okay. a lot of the weights and everything are, aren't up to date, but they're on there and uh, available for a really good deals. So check out my social media stuff, Facebook, Instagram. We've got a YouTube video on it with a promo code and everything. Um, nice. So that, I guess that's the main thing I'd like to plug. I'd love to ship a lot of animals out in the next couple of weeks and I can't run any sales. What's that? I can't run sure. any sales. <laughs> Not on my stuff. <laughs> well, no, you can't. You definitely can't. Definitely can't. <laughs> we as Kyle, anything y'all would have put before we uh, let you get out here and enjoy the rest of your night? Uh, Instagram, man. Follow me on YouTube. Uh, join the Patreon. Uh, that's about it. I need to get myself a Patreon. I got, a lot, of knowledge. got a lot of knowledge. <laughs> it's definitely awesome, bro. Having so many different people to pick and choose information from, thinking outside the box. Mm -hmm. People take you out your comfort zone. Uh, you make like super dope friends. Like it's it's amazing, bro. I love I love Patreon. I sure. wish I could be more active. Like I do a lot of uh, exclusive videos and things like that for my Patreon. I wish I could be a little bit more interactive with each person. It's it's just a matter of time for me. It's like tough. I. I've sure. got such a big collection and it's so yeah. hard, but I do the best that I can. I think people really appreciate, like I'll oh, just yeah. take out, I'll just shoot videos while I'm working and show different, uh, different clutch or pairs that I've got going or different clutches, a lot of incubation uh, techniques and just a lot of uh, general knowledge and stuff. But, you know, I try to make it worthwhile for everybody. Yeah. Heck yeah. Nope. Heck yeah. Nope. All right, guys. Well, Appreciate y'all coming out, man. Like I say, y'all came by. Y'all blessed the show, man. Y'all dropped a ton of knowledge, a lot of insight, a lot of good stories. Definitely looking forward to getting y'all back on the show again. Uh, everybody in the uh, chat, man, really appreciate y'all coming out, showing love. Man, y'all came and showed out tonight. At one point, we had over 80 folks in the building. So oh, wow. definitely appreciate all the love, appreciate the support. But until next time for Clutch Conversations, I'm Mike. The lovely lady behind the scenes is Takara. Thank y'all for coming out. Be blessed. Peace. Yep, have a good night, guys. <laughs>